And a good afternoon, everybody. This is Bill Berg along with Mike Pyle, welcoming you to our Big Ten Game of the Week here on WGN Radio. Today, it matches the Wolverines of Michigan against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, direct from Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Fighting Irish have just come out on the field. They have gone to the sidelines. We are anticipating the arrival of the Wolverines of Michigan, and needless to say, with this heavily partisan crowd, you will know it when they come through the tunnel. This will be the 13th meeting between these two ball clubs. It dates back to 1887. Michigan has won 10. Notre Dame has won but two. The rivalry terminated with a game in 1943 that was won by Notre Dame here at Michigan, 35 to 12. That rivalry was renewed last year with a Michigan victory at South Bend, 28 to 14. Dan Devine's Fighting Irish trying to avenge that loss here today at Michigan Stadium. Michigan off to a devastating start with a 49-7 win over Northwestern. Dan Devine's Irish as yet untested. He will have at least six sophomores in the starting defensive lineup. He will have a number of youngsters on offense today because there have been injuries. For instance, we are expecting to see young John Sweeney, a freshman from Deerfield High School, starting at fullback. We are expecting to see in the backfield with him some experience, namely Rusty Lish at quarterback, the 6'4", 210-pound senior from Belleville. There's the roar, and here comes the maize and blue. The Wolverines of Michigan being led by their cheerleading unit to the near side of the field. Huddling up around one another, clapping hands, slapping helmets, hugging each other. And this partisan crowd of nearly 105,000 loving every minute of it. As I was about to say to you in the backfield with Sweeney for Notre Dame will be another senior, the All-American candidate running back, Vegas Ferguson. The flanker back is expected to be Pete Houlihan. He's a junior from Liverpool. And from there, it's anybody's guess. As Dan Devine has said, he will be shuttling talent. He is certainly not about to say for sure that this young man or that one is going to be the guy to carry the load because he simply does not know as yet. This is the start of the fifth season for Dan Devine at Notre Dame. Over the course of that time, his ball clubs have won 37 games. They have lost but 10, and they have gone to three straight bowl games, including their fine come-from-behind dramatic victory in the Cotton Bowl on January 1st of this year against Houston. Overall, in 90 seasons in South Bend, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame have amassed 600 victories against 160 losses and 38 ties. So they have won nearly 78% of their games. A proud and rich heritage for the young men who wear the, the Irish colors to uphold during this 1979 season. Notre Dame on the road has also had an excellent record. They've won 20 of 23 ball games that they have played on the road for season openers. Their only loss in 1956 when they lost down in Texas to SMU 19 to 13. We are now getting the flip of the coin at midfield. And Michael, let's see what's going to happen. Who's going to receive and who's going to kick. It's going to be a good ball game. Oh, there's no question about that, Bill. I'm looking for a, a great ball game. How could it not be? Uh, Notre Dame and Michigan, both in the top 10 in the early season polls. But to, what we need to look for today is that young Irish defense, the inexperienced players because of injuries. And they've just showed who is receiving the ball, Bill. Notre Dame won the toss, elected to receive. They will be lining up to our right. So the Wolverines of Michigan will be kicking off. And the Irish will immediately go on offense. Bill, a couple of halftime scores in other college games going on right now. Michigan State is leading Oregon 20 to 10 at the halftime. And Wisconsin, another Big Ten school, leading the Air Force 14 to nothing at halftime. And other halftime score in a Big Ten game. Illinois nothing. Missouri nothing. 0-0 at halftime. All right. Ali Aji Sheik is going to kick off for the Wolverines of Michigan. He's a walk-on from Texas who was born in Ann Arbor. How's that for confusing you early? But this young man's dad came from Iran, went to the University of Michigan, met a lovely young lady at the university. They married, and the result of that was little Ali, who has now grown up and become quite a place kicker in Texas. 
He did not play in his senior year. He was hurt. But word does get around, at least if your Shem, Bo Schembechler word gets around. And they invited this kid to come out as a walk-on. And Allie proceeded to kick a couple of them practically from here to Detroit. And Bo said, hey, I think we've got something. We just might take a further look at this kid. And he is the one to do the kicking. So Allie Aji Sheik is going to give it a boot. And the Irish are going to receive it. There's the run-up and the kick. It is taken at the 10, 15, 20-yard line, 25, out to the 30, 32-yard line. And we'll check and see who's in the bottom of the football. Ty Barber, out to the 32-yard line for the Irish. And Stuart Harris brought him down. He's the Wolfman. I think there was a flag on the field, Bill. Michigan was offside on the kick, and that just may be the tone of this game right there. They're ready to go. Someone ran offside going down on the kickoff, and they're discussing it with the team captains right now. It looks like Notre Dame has decided to, uh, to not take the penalty, to decline it, and take that ball on the 36-yard line. He was hit at the 32, drove forward across the 35 to the 36, and that's where the Irish are going to put it in play. Rusty Lish is calling signals from the I formation. Long count. Oh, they're doing some dazzling back there. Here's a handoff to Vegas Ferguson. He crosses the 40-yard line to the 41. Brought down by Ron Simpkins, the inside linebacker. He needs but eight tackles to become Michigan's all-time leader in that category. He has a career total of 370. Ron Simpkins, the senior from Detroit on the tackle. Well, Vegas Ferguson getting the yardage out to the just shy of the 42-yard line. Second down, caught at five. Lish calls his signals. Looks over the Michigan defense. Man in motion left. Lish wants to throw. Sets up, has protection over the middle. He's got his man at the 40, the 35, the 30-yard line. Inside the 30-yard line is Tony Hunter, the split end. Stuart Harris, the Wolfman, had to come up and make the grab. So on second down, Rusty Lish goes up top and hits the split end, Tony Hunter, for 30 yards. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a big play, but Notre Dame is going to be surprising all afternoon. They already have in the first play the tight end moving back and forth. Nick Bear not even on their three deep, a tight end. And in that time, Tony Hunter, not the starter uh, at, as a split end. Dave Condini is. He received that pass. They're going to be putting in people all over the place. Here's a handoff to Ferguson, hit at the 30, breaks away, 25, 23-yard line. Vegas Ferguson was stacked up at the 30, and he broke loose, cut outside, and got inside the 25. Simpkins again making the tackle. And we have one of the Irish down. Let's see what that's going to be about. That's uh, number 78. It looks like Tim Huffman, of course, the brother of the great All-American center, Dave Huffman, who graduated last year, and Tim Huffman has been injured. He wasn't scheduled to start again. Tim Huffman wasn't scheduled to start. He did start the game. Now he's down. The Irish have had an awful lot of injury problems. It's, it's going to be hard for us to know who's in that ball game without checking those numbers closely. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if Tim Huffman is going to be all right. Vegas Ferguson picked up five yards on the run, so when play is resumed with 13.43 to go here in the first quarter, now we're getting a penalty. We're going to take it back. We have a timeout. Let's pause right here. With, left. With two good months of building weather left, now's a perfect time to put up that redwood deck you've been planning. And now is the time to cash in on the 20% merchandise bonus at Heinz Lumber. Just pick up over $100 worth of garden-grade redwood by September 23rd, and Heinz will give you 20% of your purchase in any in-stock merchandise. Tools, building supplies, and other items for the home. Your Heinz professional has everything you need to get started on your handsome redwood deck. Along with helpful advice on materials and construction, he has deck kits that include lumber, hardware, and step-by-step -step instructions. All for as little as $246 for an 8-foot square deck. Analytic stains and tops and water seal stains help you add the final touches to preserve that rustic look for years. Remember, when you do it yourself with Redwood, Heinz helps you do it right. There's a Heinz Lumber Home Center in Park Ridge, 400 Bussey Highway. Okay, Mike, there was a flag there. I did not pick up the penalty, but it's first and 17. 
a personal foul that's on the 39-yard line, and Lish on a delay to Vegas Ferguson across the 40, just shy of the 35-yard line. They worked the draw. Curtis Greer was the first man to hit him and bring him down, and there was a fumble, and it looks like the football might belong to Michigan. Let's see if they're going to give it to the Wolverines. There was a loose ball. A couple of the Wolves signaling they thought they had possession, but let's see if that's going to be the case. The Notre Dame offensive unit remains on the field, so it looks like it is not going to be turned over to the Wolverines, but in fact will be retained by the Irish just outside the 35-yard line. Ron Simpkins on the bottom of that pile again. Vegas Ferguson still did have the football, however. Second down for the Irish. Lish wants to throw. Now runs up the middle. Goes to the 35-yard line, and he is stacked up just before he gets there. Lish couldn't find anybody open downfield. The deep secondary for the Wolverines with good coverage. And it was Andy Canavino, the inside linebacker, making the grab on him. His dad played for Ohio State in the 58 Rose Bowl, following in the family tradition and making the fine play right there for the Wolves. So it remains at the 35, third down and 18 yards to go, just under 12 and a half minutes to play. No score at Ann Arbor, first quarter. Lish brings him out. He has Sweeney and Vegas. Lish wants to throw, looking up over the middle, incomplete. The pass is incomplete. It was intended for Tony Hunter to split in. Michael Harden, the free safety, breaking it up. So just when it looked like the Irish might mount the first drive of the afternoon, it stalls at the 35 and a kicking situation. Dick Bushka will do the kicking. He'll kick from midfield. Gets it away. No serious rush put on him. A spinning kick. And it's going out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. So not a very good kick. 19 yards. Not very good at all. Mike Jolly was the nearest man to it. He let it go, and it went out of bounds at the 16. That's where the Wolverines will put it in play first and 10. B.J. Dickey, the junior from Ottawa, Ohio, to start directing the attack for the Wolverines. Dickey calling his signals, looking at a five-man defensive line. Gives to the second man, Steve Edwards. Edwards to the outside of the 20, the 22-yard line. Stan Edwards across the 20 to the 22, brought down by Sitchi. Steve Sitchi, the strong safety, coming up to make the tackle. They spot it at the 23. Bill, this is what we want to look for. This is the big test. Michigan's offense, of course, looked good last week against Northwestern, scoring 49 points, and we've got that young defense of Notre Dame on the field. Pickup of seven, second down, three yards. The first man through, and that is the fullback, Lawrence Reed. And he's across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Kevin Griffith brought him down. And they're going to measure to see if he's got a first down. Our broadcast coming to you on WGN Radio in Chicago. Bill Berg and Mike Pyle on a beautiful day in Ann Arbor. 11-17 to go in the first quarter. No score in the ballgame. Michigan and Notre Dame. It's going to be very close. Let's see if he got the first down. Taking a good long look, and they say he got it. He had the nose of the football. First and ten for the Wolverines. Alan Mitchell brings in a play. He's shuttling at wide receiver with Anthony Carter. Mitchell spreads wide to the right now. Dickey calls his signals. High formation. Rolls right. Gets across the 25 to the 30 and across the 32-yard line. B.J. Dickey on a keeper. Gets across the 32, falls forward to the 33. The left side linebacker, Mike Whittington, brought him down. The 6'2 senior, Mike Whittington. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought we had Rick Leach back on that rollout, turning the corner. It almost it looked like a broken play. It looked like uh, Dickey wanted to hand off, but he turned that corner and made a nice game. Picked up six, second down, four yards to go. 
Dickey drops back. Play action fake. Rolling left. Throws up over the middle. And it's complete to Marsh. He's at midfield and down near the 45-yard line of the Irish. So Dickey, on a rollout, play action fake, goes up the middle to his tight end, Doug Marsh, who caught four passes in the victory over Northwestern last week. And it's a big play for the Wolverines and a first down in Notre Dame territory. He was brought down by the strong safety, Steve Sitchie. And what a great catch by Doug Marsh. Good for 21 yards. So let's see what BJ comes up with now. He rolls right. Going to keep it. 45, 40, 35 yard line, 32 yard line and driven out of bounds. Alan Mitchell led the way with a clean block. Dave Waymer, the cornerback on the near side, had to come up to make the bump and get him out of bounds. But not before he gets another first down for the Wolverines. They spot it at the Notre Dame 33-yard line, first and 10. And boy, is that outside open, Bill. Dickey, he rolled once for a nice game, this one for a big game, and he could have run that other rollout that he threw to Marsh. The Wolverines starting to carve it up now. Clayton in motion off to the right. Dickey hands off to his fullback. 25-yard line, 20-yard line. Reed busting right up the middle. Went right over center and guard. And the free safety, Tom Gibbons, the 6'1 junior, had to make the stop, but didn't get him until the 21-yard line. And they, Mike, are starting to blow some holes. Well, I'll tell you, what a nice play that was. A 12-yard gain by Reed. That was hard to explain, like a reverse pivot. It, it surprised me. Quarterback peeled around and gave the handoff behind him to Reed. Had a big hole up the middle. Dickey sets him down. Checks that Notre Dame defense. Here is a handoff. It goes to Edwards on a sweep. 20-yard line, 15-yard line. Still spinning down at the 14-yard line. Steve Edwards, who started the 78 Rose Bowl as a freshman and gained 74 yards, coming on strong after not playing all of last year because of an ankle injury. He was brought down by the right side linebacker, Bobby Leopold. But he got seven, and it's second down and three yards to go as the Wolves continue to drive on Notre Dame. Second down, three yards to go. The ball on the 14-yard line of the Fighting Irish. Here's a handoff again to Edwards. Edwards is stacked up as he got past the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard, not much more. Got very little that time. Leopold, again, was the man on the tackle. Alan Mitchell coming in with a play. Flip-flopping with Anthony Carter. Let's see what Shem Beckler and company come up with here. He got a short yard on the play. Make it third down and two yards to go from the 13. Third and two from the 13 for the Wolverines. This drive started on their own 16-yard line. Dickey wants to throw, looks, fires. It is incomplete. Incomplete on the near side at the four-yard line. It was intended for Alan Mitchell, the wide receiver. He made one touchdown catch last week. Tom Gibbons, the man breaking up the play. So that makes it fourth down and two yards to go. And we are going to get the field goal effort from the 20. The kick is up. It is good. It is good. The kick is through by Brian Virgil with 7.31 to go. Timeout on the field with a score. Michigan 3, Notre Dame nothing. Rain can give you fresh water, nourish your crops, and quench your thirst. It can also give you some headaches, damaging leather shoes, clothes, and your homes. Water acts as, a, as an adhesive, attracting dirt and dust. And over a period of time, it can literally destroy porous materials. There are many water repellent products on the market, but Thompson's Water Seal actually waterproofs. Unlike others that merely coat the surface, Thompson's Water Seal is a transparent, penetrating waterproofing sealer that leaves no residue and doesn't change colors. Thompson's Water Seal waterproofs concrete, brick, block, wood, canvas, and drywall. And it's so simple to use. Spray, brush, or roll it on, and your water penetration problems are over. Since water is going to be around for a long time, it's nice to know the people who make Thompson's Water Seal will be too. Thompson's Water Seal is available at Heinz Lumber and True Value Hardware. 
The kick by Virgil, a 29-yard field goal. Last week, he was 7-for-7 seven seven in the point-after-touchdown category against Northwestern. And here he gets a 29-yard field goal to put the Wolverines up with seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter by a score of 3 to nothing. Another Big Ten score, Bill. Northwestern and Wyoming are tied 13-13 to at halftime. Also, Minnesota leading Ohio State 14-7 to at the end of one quarter. Minnesota ahead of Ohio State 14-7. to Okay, and Ali Aji Sheik is now going to kick off for the second time this afternoon. And deep for Notre Dame will be Jim Stone and Ty Barber. They tee it up at the 40. Approximately 105,000 people on hand to see the Wolverines strike first this afternoon. The run-up and the kickoff. It is deep going into the end zone. It is taken there by Barber's going to run it out. 10, 15, out to the 20-yard line in traffic across the 20 to about the 23 where he's brought down at that point. So Notre Dame will put it in play first and 10 on their own 23-yard line as Ty Barber took a gamble, taking that ball in the end zone with a lot of maize and blue coming in on him. But he ran it out to the 23. Ali Haji Sheik, the, uh, the freshman walk-on kicker, made the tackle, so he doesn't mind mixing it up a little bit. Kid comes to play. You better believe it, Mike. Okay, let's see what Lish can direct for Notre Dame. Here's a handoff to Vegas Ferguson, and he is hit as it crosses the line of scrimmage. Oh, he was really stacked up. Andy Canavino, the linebacker, was there to wrap a couple of arms around him and drop him for virtually no gain at all. Make it second and ten. I've already said it, Bill, that Michigan defense is awesome. There isn't a man on that playing field right there in the Michigan defense that can't run 40 yards under five seconds, which is unbelievable. Here's a handoff to the second man through. Goes to Vegas Ferguson. He cracks across the 25 and is really upended at that point. So he got a couple, but he got them the hard way. Curtis Greer was at the bottom of the pile. And Notre Dame will remember him. He had a fumble recovery against the Irish last year. He made a tackle in the end zone that resulted in a safety against Notre Dame. So they know about Curtis. And he's up for this one again today against the Irish. Okay, third down, seven yards to go. Let's see if we're going to be in a passing situation here. One would expect it. Lish dropping back. No, sir. Goes to Vegas Ferguson. Vegas trying to get outside. He's at the 25. He's at the 30. Crosses the 30-yard line to about the 33. Brought down by the middle guard, Mike Turgovac. I was just talking about that speed. Turgovac, the middle guard, made that, made that tackle on an end run way out there close to the sideline. Good acceleration by Vegas Ferguson getting outside, but it was not enough for the first down. He came up about a yard short. So the roar you hear is for the superb work of the defensive unit of the Wolverines. Notre Dame is going to have to kick it away. And Bushke is standing back on his own 17-yard line to kick it. Gets the punt away, spiraling kick. Taken by Carter at the 24. He's at the 30. He's at the 35. Loses the football. It is loose on the field. It's at the 35-yard line, and it belongs to the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Carter coughed it up. The football belongs to Notre Dame just outside the 35-yard line of the Wolverines. Tom Robluski made that uh, fumble recovery. He has to be a kicking unit man. I don't think he's on our three deep, but uh, Tom Robluski made the recovery. So the Irish with a break. Let's see what they do with it. Vegas Ferguson at the 35. Vegas Ferguson crawling, diving, trying to get forward to the 30-yard line. I think they'll spot it at about the 31 or 32 where it looked from here as though his knee touched. Yes, they move it just outside the 31-yard line. Four minutes, 55 seconds to go first quarter. Michigan on top with a 29-yard field goal, three to nothing. But the Irish on the attack, trying to cash in on a fumble recovery. Hand off to Ferguson again across the 30 down to the 26-yard line. Vegas Ferguson slicing off right tackle. Moves it to the 26. Dale Kites, the first man to hit him, along with Andy Canavino. 
In the third quarter, Bill, Michigan State is leading Oregon 27 to 17. Third down, one yard to go for the first down. Big down for the Irish. The Wolverines girding Ford on defense. It goes to Ferguson again. He's across the 25-yard line. He has the first down. He dives forward to about the 23. Vegas Ferguson, the workhorse on this series of downs for the Irish, finally brought down by the Wolfman, Stuart Harris. But not before the Irish get the first down. First and 10 for Notre Dame at the Michigan 24-yard line. Clock running with 358, 357, 356. Lish drops back, gives to Ferguson again. And Vegas Ferguson knifes near the 21-yard line. Vegas Ferguson, who gained 1,192 yards last year, an average of 5.6 yards per carry, the workhorse so far this afternoon for Dan Devine's Irish. He was brought down by the strong side halfback, Mark Bremen. They spot it at the 22, make it second down and nine yards to go for the Irish as they try to get on the scoreboard, trailing three to nothing here in the first quarter. Rusty Lish. Gives off again to Ferguson. This time they were ready for him and stack him up. They stack him up for no gain. Might have even lost a half a yard. Curtis Greer was there. Stuart Harris was there. And they combined to scissor him and knock him down for no gain. Third down, a long nine for the Irish. Two minutes, 53 seconds to go. First quarter of play at Ann Arbor. Bill Berg and Mike Pyle on WGN Radio. Hunter spread wide to the right. Houlihan to the left. Rusty Lish calls him out. Drops back. Throws to the left side. It is incomplete. It was intended for the flanker, Pete Houlihan. And he was hammered at the 20-yard line as the ball got to him and popped out of his arms. It was Mike Jolly, the cornerback on the right side, who popped him as soon as that football arrived, and it brings up a fourth and nine situation for the Irish. I think Pete Houlihan should have had that pass, Bill. He just dropped it. He just let it slip out of his fingers, coming across that middle. It must have heard footsteps. Come what may, Chuck Mayle's going to try the field goal to come from the 30. It is up. It is good. We have a tie ball game, a 40-yard kick, 30 plus the 10 of the end zone. Timeout on the field, 2.27 to go first quarter. Score, Notre Dame 3, Michigan 3. Always a superstar. Hotel Sahara in Las Vegas has the perfect answer for all of you who have ever asked yourself the question, how do I get away for some fun without spending a fortune? The answer, Sahara Safari 79. It's the most spectacular mini vacation you'll ever have. Picture this, a sparkling sun-drenched pool, cool greens and fairways on a championship golf course, elegant dining, gorgeous rooms, the biggest superstars in show business in our Congo showroom and Casbah Lounge, and it's all here on your Sahara Safari 79 for just $63 per person, double occupancy, subject to space availability. Three days, two nights, two great shows. It's a winner. See your nearest travel agent or call toll-free for Del Webb's Hotel Sahara. Always a and 27 seconds to go in the first quarter as Notre Dame answers a 29-yard field goal by Michigan with a 40-yard field goal of their own and we have a tie ball game at Ann Arbor. And the young man, Chuck Mayle, who banged it through the uprights for the field goal will now kick off for the Irish. Tony Jackson will be deep. Anthony Carter will be deep. Stan Edwards back. Okay, let's see what we're going to get here. 2.27 to go. The victory march of Michigan in the background. The run-up, the kick by the Irish. It sails deep into the end zone, right out of here, and will put it in play. First and 10 at the 20-yard line with a touchback. Well, we mentioned the young man, Ali Adji Sheik, who can really bang it home for Michigan. Mayo gave no quarter there for Notre Dame as he really sailed it out of the end zone, disallowing any potential run back by the Wolverines. 
3 to 3. 227 to go. And BJ Dickey, the 5 foot 11, 188 pound junior from Ottawa, Ohio directing the attack for the University of Michigan at his own 20 yard line. Play action fake, rolls left, keeper across the 25, 30 yard line, 32 yard line. On a keeper, a first down and a 12-yard gain by B.J. Dickey, the Michigan quarterback. Brought down by Tom Gibbons, the free safety for the Irish. Boy, I tell you, Mike, this kid, you were right. It's a page from Rick Leach. This kid can run the option, this B.J. Dickey. And it's wide open outside. Notre Dame has not closed off the outside. A quick score. Illinois losing 7-0 to Missouri in the third period. Dickey from the 32, he gives off to Reed, his fullback, and Reed is stacked up. Stacked up at the 33, Bob Crable, the middle linebacker, the first man to meet him. Give him a couple of yards, make it second down and a long eighth. They spot it just a hair shy of the 34-yard line. Bob Crable, of course, the uh, young, one of the young sophomores in that lineup playing middle linebacker, uh, hard shoes to fill, Bob Golick, who's no longer around. That's a, a tough, tough act to follow. Alan Mitchell spread wide to the right. He brought in the play. Clayton left. Back to passes. Dickey dumps off to his back to Reed or to Edwards. He's got Edwards at the 45-yard line. Stan Edwards, the tailback, coming out of the backfield, made the catch at the 40 and rambles to the 45-yard line. Another first down for the Wolverines. An 11-yard gain on the play. Steve Sitchie, the free safety, the first man to hit him and bring him down along with Crable. But not before the Wolverines pick up another first down, first and 10 on their own 45-yard line. Carter back in with a play as he and Alan Mitchell, the wide receiver, shuttle. Here's a pitch back to the tailback, Edwards. Edwards hemmed in at the 40, drives to the 45 as he broke the tackle at the 40. Stanley Edwards, the junior tailback from Detroit, just did get back to the line of scrimmage and not anymore. He was almost dropped for a five-yard loss back at the 40. And Dickey got rid of that football just in the nick of the time he got hit hard in that backfield. Yes, he did. So no gain in the play, second down and 10 yards to go for the Wolverines. From their own 45-yard line. 22, 21, and 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Let's see what Dickey comes up with here. Dropping back. Play action fake. Throws up over the middle. It is complete to Mitchell. He's got him at the 40-yard line, and he's dropped at that point. Complete at the 40-yard line of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. A 15-yard pick up another first down. And Dave Wehmer, the man on the tackle, to stop him at that point. Two seconds, one second, that's going to be it. That's it for the first quarter of play at Ann Arbor. Time out. When the sun goes down And the evening rolls around That's the time I find I got the ribbon on my mind I've got that blue ribbon on my mind beers but there's only one Pabst. It's brewed to be the best naturally with no artificial ingredients and you can taste it. I've got a taste for living I'm thinking of blue Well Bill the, the crucial play in that first quarter had to be the fumbled punt by Anthony Carter the freshman who is one that they're really looking forward to big things here at Michigan, but Anthony Carter popped up that football, allowed Notre Dame to move in and kick a field goal, and the score is tied 3-3 three three in quite a ball game so far. And the Wolverines have the ball first and 10 now on Notre Dame's 40-yard line. A drive which started on their own 20. Let's see if they can sustain the tack or if that young Irish defense with six sophomores in there can gird against the thrust of the Wolverines and stop it. Dickey Play action, rolls right, crosses the 40 down to the 35-yard line. Little rollout by B.J. Dickey. 
as he faked to the first man through and then tucked in right behind him and rolled for five yards. Lawrence Reed was the man who threw the block for him. Second down, five yards to go at the 35-yard line of the Fighting Irish. We are tied at three. A 29-yard field goal by Michigan, a 40-yard field goal by Notre Dame, and that's where it stands. Carter spread wide, near side. Clayton spread to the left. Dickey back, play action, looks, throws, deep, incomplete. Intended for Anthony Carter, and I have to think that he threw that one away. Carter had three defenders all around him, and the young quarterback did what a good pro quarterback does. He just threw it out of the stadium. Yeah, he sure did. Of course, you, you wonder, maybe he thought Anthony Carter was going to be a little deeper. But no, I think you're right, Bill. He did just let that go and flipped it away. You're seeing all kind. We are seeing all kinds of offensive sets by both teams. Notre Dame came into this game going to use a lot of different offensive sets, moving to tight end. Michigan giving a little of their own medicine. They've got their tight end, Doug Marsh, lining up behind the quarterback and moving one way or the other. Here is a handoff to the second man through, and that's Stan Edwards, and Stan Edwards drives to the 30-yard line and just inside the 30. And he got himself a first down in so doing. The tailback, Stan Edwards, was hit hard at the 32, and he literally hurtled his way forward inside the 29-yard line before the strong safety, Steve Sitchie, was able to make the tackle. But another first down for the Wolverines, first and 10 at the 29-yard line of Notre Dame. So Michigan continues to drive downfield. Carter spread wide to the left. Clayton is wide to the right. It goes again to Edwards. Edwards sweeping wide right across the 25 down to about the 23-yard line. Stan Edwards, who has 4-5 speed, missed all of last year with an ankle injury, performing very well for the Wolverines today. He was brought down by Jay Case, Scott Zedek, Mark Whittington, they all met him at the 23-yard line. Second down and four as he picked up six on the play. Second down, four yards to go from the 23-yard line of Notre Dame. Now they overload to the left side. Dickey with a long count, dropping back, hands off, and a man wide open. It's Edwards. Edwards down near the 15, down to the 10-yard line. Stan Edwards, the tailback, had a huge hole. And he blew through it, cut outside, shook one tackler at the 20, broke another at the 15, and was brought down just shy of the 10-yard line. And Dave Waymer was the man to hammer him, but not before he got 13 yards and another Michigan first down. Two of the players on that Notre Dame defense that they didn't know if they'd be able to play, two of their good linemen, Jay Case and Scott Zedek, not expected to play, are both in that ball game. It's at the 11-yard line. Dickey dropping back, now rolling right, looking, cuts up across the 10 down to the 7-yard line. B.J. Dickey trying to go outside, thought better of it, cut back up against the grain and got to the 7-yard line, brought down by the free safety Tom Gibbons. So he picked up 4 on the play. Make it 2nd down and 6 yards to go. Michigan could conceivably pick up another 1st down because the ball is at the seven-yard line of Notre Dame. This drive started on the 20. Dickey calls him out. Man in motion, off to the left. And we get a whistle. Delay of the game. Too much time. Boy, too much time, they had a man in motion, and that man in motion took a little bit too much time, and that'll be five yards assessed against Michigan. That's, tough, that's what really hurts you. Oh, tough place to get it down there in the seven-yard line. You better believe it. So that'll march it back to the 12. Make it second down and 11 yards to go from the 12. Betts comes back out. Doug Marsh goes back in at tight end. Dickey fakes. Dickey rolls, looks, throws in the end zone. It is incomplete. It was intended for Ralph Clayton. The pass intended for the wingback, Ralph Clayton. An outstanding athlete. Averaged 20 yards per catch last season for the Wolverines. He had eight touchdown pass catches to tie a Michigan record, and he was trying to get one right there, but to no avail. So it is third and 11 from the 12-yard line. 
And the other tight end, Norm Betts, brings in the play from the sidelines. Clayton comes out. Carter comes in. Carter spread wide to the near side. Now goes in motion to the right. And we get a whistle just as the play unfolds. And again, we're going to get a delay of the game call on the Wolverines of Michigan. So two delay of the game penalties have really hurt this drive so far as they were really cooking at the seven yard line of Notre Dame. Very uncharacteristic of Schembechler teams, Bill, to have this kind of thing happen. Also, to be running the types of plays that they're running, the passing game. And it looks like maybe that mixing it up like they are with the run and the pass has confused them. Maybe they aren't ready enough. The play before, Alan Mitchell wasn't even on the field. I thought we were seeing the old Army lonesome end. He came off the sideline just before the snap and lined up about five yards from the sideline. Okay, here we go. Third down, 17. Dickey back to throw. Looking, looking. Hemmed in at the 25. Breaks loose. 20, 15, 10. Five-yard line. Down near the goal line. To the touchdown, his knee touched at probably the one or two yard line. And we get an official timeout. Let's see where they're going to mark it. They had him trapped upfield. He made the best of a bad situation and really rambled. He is very, very close to a touchdown, but he is really closer to a first down and may well have made it. Keep in mind, as I told you, they were at the seven. They could get to the one-yard line and pick up a first-and-goal situation. And he just might have made it there. We're getting the measurement. He is very, very close to the first down. He's an inch or two. Maybe two inches away from the first down. Maybe two inches no more. Did not get it. So it is fourth down. Listen to the crowd. The Irish going to really have to dig in here. Dickey brings him out with Edwards and Reed, his fullback. Dickey calling the signals. Man in motion to the right, Clayton. Dickey dropping back. He hands off. Into the end zone for the touchdown is Stan Edwards. Edwards was hit at the one-yard line. He was hit at the one, but he rolled off the tackle and got into the end zone for the touchdown. And it's six more for the Wolverines of Michigan. That was a surprising play. But I think I think it surprised the Notre Dame defense, too. Boy, when you've got fourth and an inch to go to run that wide play with all that chance to get it caught behind the line of scrimmage, but he went wide, did have to elude one defender, but got into the end zone. Tommy Gibbons had a shot at him, but couldn't haul him in. Brian Virgil, who was 7 for 7 last week, will try the extra point right here. He already has a 29-yard field goal to his credit. It's 9 to 3 with 10.48 to go, an 80-yard drive by the Wolverines. Okay, now we're set. The ball is down. The kick is in the air. And it is good. Timeout on the field, 10.48 to go in the first half with the score. Michigan 10 and Notre Dame 3. If you're a young man or woman who has or is about to receive a degree in science or engineering, why not put that degree to work in the United States Air Force? Upon completion of the three-month officer training school, you'll be commissioned as an Air Force officer. Then you'll put your skills and education to good use in a challenging and stimulating Air Force job. In addition, the Air Force offers 30 days of vacation each year with pay, medical and dental care, graduate education opportunities, good retirement options, and an excellent salary. Consider the Air Force as you think about your future. We're a modern service with an interest in the future. We offer the scientist or engineer virtually unlimited opportunities. To find out how you might qualify, contact Captain Jim Keene at 800 Lee Street in Des Plaines or call him at 824-7978. Air Force, it's a great way of life. Sponsored by U.S. Air Force. This is WGN Radio Chicago and Big Ten scores around the Midwest. Number three ranked Oklahoma leading Iowa 7-6 to six at halftime. Bit of a surprise there. And... Minnesota at halftime leading Ohio State 17 to 7. Ohio State, of course, ranked 15. Another surprise. 
Aliaji Sheik with a run up, going to kick it off now. Barber and Stone are deep. And it carries to Stone at the three. He's out to the 10, the 15, 20 yard line, 25, up at the 30 and across the 30. Good run back by Jimmy Stone. He was brought down by Needham. So the Irish will put it in play first and 10. They spot it at the Irish 31 yard line. An 80 yard drive by Michigan culminating with a one-yard run by Stan Edwards. And the conversion by Virgil gives Michigan the 10-3 lead with 10.42 to go. Lish back to throw down the near sideline. It is complete. Oh. It is complete to Tony Hunter. Now they're going to rule he was out of bounds. He made the catch, but they rule he was out of bounds. Mark Freeman was right with him, and they're bringing it back upfield. A nice grab by Tony Hunter, but he was out of bounds. All Big Ten selection, Michael Harden for Michigan, was covering on the play. He missed the ball. Tony Hunter caught it, but they're ruling he stepped out of bounds. A big play called back for Notre Dame. Boy, he was right on the money, too. Lish laid it right in there. So that makes it second down, 10 yards to go. The ball remains at the 31-yard line. Vegas Ferguson's been the workhorse so far for the Irish. Lish wants to throw again. Drops back, dumps off to Ferguson at the 25. He's at the 30. He's at the 33. Falls forward to the 35-yard line. Great second effort by the 6'1 senior from Richmond, Indiana, Vegas Ferguson. Gave him four yards on the play. Make it second down. And about six, six and a half. He is just shy, actually, of the 35-yard line. So it's nearer third and seven. And perhaps a passing situation for the senior Rusty Lish. Let's see, from the eye. Dropping back, looking, looking. Big rush at him. Down he goes, but not before he gets it away and completes it to the tight end, Dean Maztec. He was hit immediately by the Wolfman, Stuart Harris. It's not nearly enough for the first down as they would have had to get to the 41-yard line, so the Irish are going to have to kick it away. Dean Maztec, of course, a sophomore from Toledo, Ohio. Some people think Dean Maztec has the potential to become better than Ken McAfee. Jolly and Carter are deep to return for Michigan. Bushka going to kick it. Gets it away from the 30-yard line. Spiraling kick taken by Carter at the 20, 25, 30. Breaks loose at the 30 to the 35-yard line and is brought down at that point. Anthony Carter, who coughed up a punt return to set up the Notre Dame field goal, brings it back this time successfully to the 35, and we get a timeout on the field with a score. Michigan 10, Notre Dame 3. Yeah, we spent 10 good years together. That's a long time. You're darn tootin', partner. Maybe you'd like to. You'll treat him right? Sure. Adios, old fella. They just don't make trucks like that anymore. No, GMC makes them better. Why, I was driving trucks before you started droolin' on them, Well, Sonny. here, look at these new 79 GMC pickups and vans. Earlier, maybe, but fancy looks won't trip my trigger. Well, the improvements on these GMCs are more than skin deep. What'd they do, pinstripe the engine? Well, these GMC engines are redesigned to give you better fuel efficiency and power. Well, now you're talking my lingo. And these 79 vans and pickups provide you with all the solid comfort and roadability You've come to expect from GMC. What was that? Don't look now. Where? Who? What? I think that GMC pickup in the corner kind of likes you. Ah, shucks. In Oak Forest, visit Community Motors GMC, and in Gary, Indiana, see Summerfield GMC. Bill, did you expect to see this much wide-open offense in a game like this? No, I really didn't, Mike. B.J. Dickey calls him out. Play action fake. Rolling right, looking, looking, throws over the middle. Clayton had it and dropped it. Clayton had it at the 46-yard line of Notre Dame, and he dropped the football. The usually sure-handed wide a wing back, Ralph Clayton, just simply dropped the football. So it'll be second and 10 as they bring it back to the 34-yard line. Just over nine minutes to go in the first half. Michigan leading it 10-3. A 29-yard field goal, a one-yard touchdown. 
A 40-yard field goal by the Irish, and that's where we stand right now. B.J. Dickey sets the Wolverines down. Play action fake again, and again he wants to throw. Dodges one tackle, can't dodge the second. Ball is loose. Notre Dame has it. Notre Dame has the football at the 39-yard line of the Wolverines. A second costly fumble. And the man on top of the football was John Hankard. Whittington, the linebacker, was the one who popped him and hankered. Always the alert opportunist pounced on the football. The last time Michigan coughed it up, it resulted in a Notre Dame field goal for three. Let's see if the Irish can convert here. They trail 10-3. They're on the 39-yard line of the Wolverines with 8.58 to go. Lish with a pitch to the deep man across the 40, the 35-yard line, down to the 33-yard line, and that's Vegas Ferguson carrying once again. Brought down by Andy Canavino and Mel Owens. They spot the football at the 33-yard line, give him six on the play, make it second down and four yards to go. Another turnover by the Wolverines and the Irish trying to make the most of it. Lish dropping back, hands off now. Good play action, went to Vegas Ferguson carried through very well looked like it was simple play action and he was going to throw off it but at the last minute he put it into the belly of Vegas Ferguson and he cut to the 30 yard line brought down by Canavino and Lemeron third down one yard to go just about a yard a yard and a half to go for the Irish the football resting just outside the Michigan 30 yard line it goes again to Ferguson. He's stacked up. He is stacked up and did not get the first down as he did not get to the 30-yard line. The linebackers, Ron Simpkins and Andy Canavino, converged on him and brought him down. Canavino and Simpkins. Simpkins setting a school record for tackles as a sophomore two years ago with 174 all over the field again today and making the big play right there. Fourth down, one yard to go. The ball is right on the 30. What? Ron Simpkins, one of three All-American candidates on that Notre or that Michigan defense, along with Curtis Greer and Mike Jolly. Fourth and one, the Irish going. Play action, gonna throw. Looking, looking, it is complete. 30-yard line inside the 25, 20-yard line and out of bounds. Stuart Harris dropping the pass receiver. It is a first and ten for Notre Dame. Maztec hauling it in and getting the first down for the Irish with 6.53 to go. First and ten at the 18-yard line for Notre Dame. It goes to Vegas Ferguson. He cracks forward to the 15. We get a flag. We have a flag. We'll wait and see what it's about as Vegas Ferguson moved to the 15-yard line. And I think it's going to go against the Irish. Just might be a holding call. Let's see. It's going to go against Notre Dame. We have yet to get the signal. But the preliminary indication is that it was on somebody in the forward wall for the Irish and most probably a holding call. They bring the football back now to the 32-yard line, and that is it. Holding against Notre Dame. So it's going to be first and 25. First down, 25 yards to go for Notre Dame from the 32-yard line of Michigan with six and a half minutes to be played in this first half. Lish dropping back. Looking, looking, throws up field. It is incomplete. It was intended for Tony Hunter and was nowhere near it. So it'll be second down and 25 to go from the 32. We have a 10 to 3 ball game in the second quarter with 6.16 to go. Michigan 10, Notre Dame 3. Lish brings him out. Almost 
fumbled the snap. Now drops back to the 40. He's in trouble. Can't get it away, and he's down. A sack at the 40. He fumbled the snap from center. Almost lost control of the football. That cost him a second dropping back. It allowed the Michigan defense to pour in there. And Ron Simpkins and Dale Kites, the right tackle, did just that and wrapped the arms around Rusty Lish and drove him to the ground at the 40-yard line of Michigan. A loss of eight on the play make it third down and 33 yards to go. And the Irish, after picking off a fumble, are now going the wrong way just when it looked like they might mount another drive. Third and 33, let's see if Lish is going up top. Vegas Ferguson in motion, off to the left. Lish dropping back, rushes on, throws over the middle. It is complete to the tight end, Maztec. He's at the 30 and inside the 30 to the 27-yard line, brought down by the short side halfback, Gerald Diggs. Gerald Diggs made the tackle. Nowhere's near enough for the first down. The ball is at the 27-yard line. Fourth and 20. And we're going to get the field goal effort by Chuck Mayle. The kick will come from the 34, a 44-yard effort. It is on its way. It is long enough. He's got it. He's got it, a 44-yard field goal by Chuck Mayle to go with his 40-yard effort earlier. There's time out on the field with 4.48 to go. <clears throat> the score, Michigan 10, Notre Dame 6. Every homeowner at some time or other is plagued by costly moisture problems. The best way to eliminate these expensive problems is to use Thompson's Water Seal. Thompson's Water Seal is a transparent waterproofing sealer that penetrates below the surface, setting up a moisture barrier lengthening the life of any porous material that it is applied to. It is also excellent for sealing and preserving bricks and masonry. Because moisture is the major cause of point peeling, paint peeling, it can be greatly minimized by priming wood surfaces prior to pa painting with Thompson's Water Seal. Thompson's Water Seal is also an excellent additive to oil-based paint. It acts as an extremely effective bonding agent and at the same time eliminates brush and lap marks. Remember Thompson's Water Seal when you want to seal your patio, concrete driveway, or stop water seepage from hairline cracks and walls. It's the ultimate in waterproofing. Thompson's Water Seal is available at Heinz Lumber and True Value Hardware. Well, Chuck Mayle has a couple of field goals for the Irish. A 40-yard effort in the first quarter, a 44-yard field goal right here. It's 10 to 6. Anthony Carter and the tailback, Steve Edwards, deep to receive for Michigan. Bill, that was quite a uh, kick by Chuck Mayle as he kicked that 44-yarder into the wind. Into as the you wind. look at the yes, flags sir. up here, they're blowing pretty good right. against him. I'll tell you, that kid really hit it. And Mayle's going to kick off now. Here is the run-up. And there's the boot. He gets a good toe into it. It's going to Anthony Carter. He's got it at the two-yard line. He's up to the 10, the 15, the 20. Blows a hole at the 20. Goes for the 25 and the 27-yard line. For just a moment, when he blew the hole at the 20, it looked like he might get some daylight down the far sideline. But the hole closed quickly. The Irish converged and finally dropped him and drove him back to the 25-yard line where the Wolverines will put it in play first and 10. So twice now, Michigan has fumbled, and twice the Irish have turned it into field goals. But they still trail by a score of 10 to 6 with 4.43 to go. The Wolverines with the football at their own 25-yard line. Dickey, hands off. It goes to Edwards. Edwards across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Got about three on the play. Bobby Leopold, the right side linebacker, making the initial hit. Second down and seven yards to go for the Wolverines. See how much they can control this football before the two teams go into the locker room. Notre Dame, of course, looking for another turnover to see if they can convert it into the score that could bring them within one on a field goal or give them the lead with a touchdown. Man in motion off to the left, that's Clayton. Play action fake. Dickey goes out on the flat. The pass is complete to Edwards. Edwards across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The tailback, Stan Edwards, coming out of the backfield, makes the catch and crosses the 30 to the 33. Hit by the middle linebacker, Bob Crable. They move the football back to the 32-yard line, make it third down in a short three. 
The wide receiver, Alan Mitchell, bringing in the play as Carter comes out to take the breather. Clock running with 3.25 to go in the first half. Third down, three yards to go. B.J. Dickey calls his signals from the eye formation. Dropping back, play action fake. Looking, looking, throws to the right side. Got his man, the tight end Marsh, across the 40 to the 43-yard line where he's driven down at that point, but not before he gets the first down for Michigan as they keep possession of the football. An 11-yard pickup on the play. He was hit by Sitchi, the strong safety, and the cornerback on the left side, Dave Weimer. The ball is at the 43-yard line of the Wolverines with three minutes and two seconds to go. First and ten. Dickey hands off, and it goes to Reed, the fullback. He's across the 45-yard line to the 46 or 47. Lawrence Reed, the senior from Philadelphia, getting the call and moving it out to the 47-yard line and just across the 47. Pickup of about four on the play. Second down and six yards to go. The Michigan band beginning to assemble now outside the end zone to our left. 2.25 to go, first half. Pitch to the deep man, the tailback. It goes to Edwards. Edwards crosses the midfield stripe and is driven back by five white shirts from Notre Dame. They'll mark his forward progress in Notre Dame territory at about the 48-yard line. He's short of the first down. It'll be third and about a yard and a half, maybe two. Bill, it looks, two. it looks like Notre Dame has made an adjustment to try and stop those sweeps that Michigan's been running. They're still in what you call a pro defense, a four-man line and three linebackers, but they're overshifting to the strong side every time with those four down linemen. Reed and Edwards, the setbacks. Fake right, roll left, pitch back to the deep man. It goes to Edwards. Edwards gets a block, gets back to the midfield stripe, and not anymore as he was bumped out of bounds. Stan Edwards almost trapped for a loss back around the 42-yard line, got back to the midfield stripe, and was knocked out by Johnny Krim. So a loss on the play. And they're going to kick it away. Ryan Virgil will do the kicking. Gets it away from his own 40. A high, booming kick. It's allowed to bounce and go out of bounds. The Irish will put it in play. Let's see where they spot it. They mark it right at the 20-yard line. So that's where Notre Dame will put it in play. First and 10 on their own 20, a 30-yard kick. 127 to go in the ball game, and the Irish on the attack, 80 yards away from the Michigan goal line. Here's a special message from Colored and Cadillac in Brookfield. Colored and Cadillac will sell you any 1979 coupe or sedan to Ville in stock for one dollar under invoice. Repeating, Colored and Cadillac will sell any 1979 Cadillac coupe or sedan to Ville in stock for one dollar under invoice. Colored and will show you the factory invoice. Yes, Colored and will show you the invoice. This sale positively ends on Monday, September 17th. There will be no exceptions. This Saturday, Sunday, and Monday are the only three days you can take advantage of this. Call 485-1070 to reserve yours. That's 485-1070, 485-1070, Colored and Cadillac, 9500 West Ogden in Brookfield. Remember, three days to get any 79 Cadillac DeVille for $1 under invoice. Call 485-1070. Mike, it's difficult to remember every last play of the half, but to the best of my recollection, I don't think Notre Dame has run anybody but Ferguson. They've thrown to Houlihan out of the backfield. They've I had, thrown to Maztec. I thought of that, too. John Sweeney, of course, the freshman fullback. Yeah, He's has, the third man on their depth chart. The other two being right. hurt from Deerfield has not run the football. Okay, here it goes to Ferguson again across the 20-25 yard line, and he stacked up at that point. Ron Simpkins made the hit. So give him five, make it second and five with 1.14 to go in the first half. Of course, that has been one of Dan Devine's big problems is his fullback. Pete Buchanan, or Dave Mitchell, was his first fullback, injured in spring practice last year. Pete Buchanan, the number two fullback, broke his ankle a week ago, and John Sweeney, the freshman, is the player. Hunter, wide right, goes to Vegas Ferguson, and he has dropped behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. They were waiting for him that time. 
and they dropped him back at the 24-yard line. Curtis Greer and Andy Canavino right there. Third down, six yards to go as he lost a yard. And Notre Dame is going to have to diversify that running game if they're going to move on the Wolverines. I'm a little surprised to see them uh, so readily just running out the clock like this. 25 seconds to go in the first half. 24, man in motion to the near side. Now sets. Pitch to the deep man, Vegas Ferguson, trying to get outside, 25, 28, and out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Vegas Ferguson is going to be a tired man going into that locker room. He has really borne the brunt of action today. The middle guard, Mike Turgovac, and the right defensive tackle, Dale Kites, combining to bump him out of bounds as he got to the 28-yard line. It's fourth down and two yards to go with 14 seconds to go. And the Irish are going to have to kick it away. Dick Bushka, Dick Bushka will do the punting. Carter and Jolly are deep. Jolly at the 40. Carter standing back in his own 31. There's the snap. It's a good one. Gets the kick away. High spiraling kick. It's going to go to Carter at the 33. Across the 35, 40, 45. Cuts back at the midfield stripe. And is dropped at that point. Anthony Carter with great acceleration. Gets it back up to the midfield stripe. A 32-yard kick and a 10-yard return. We have three seconds remaining as Michigan calls a timeout. Timeout on the field with a score of Michigan 10 and Notre Dame 6. We're about to go. Don't be so slow. Let's take our time. I got blue ribbon on my mind. But we're running late. I think my third just can't wait. Your shoes there are a lot of beers, but there's only one, Pabst. It's brewed to be the best, naturally, with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. We have three seconds to go in the half, and let's see if Bo is going to put it up and go for one. Right at the midfield stripe. Carter, the burner's in there, and he's spread wide to the left. Dropping back to throw is Dickey, looking... Throws for Carter, get him at the 30, 25 yard line and dropped and that's going to be it in the first half. They went to Carter, it was complete at the 30, but he could not break loose to get the six by getting into the end zone and that's it. The teams leave the field, the score here at halftime. Michigan 10, Notre Dame 6. And they do. Day after day, season after season, the greatest fans in the world, Chicago Cup fans. Sarmiento checks Henderson. 1-1 pitch, out of air, swings, grab ball, face it! Here comes Anderson around third, here's the throw to the plate, he scores! The Cubs win! Anderson jumps up and down on home plate, as Steve Adamaris has batted in both Cub runs! Come on out and join the action at Wrigley Field. The Cubs have made it easy for you. Just call 248-7900, give us your master charge or visa number, and we'll mail your tickets to you. Call 248-7900 or drop in at any Ticketron outlet. And remember, there are always unreserved seats that go on sale at the Wrigley Field box office the morning of every home game. Come on out. Be there next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when the Cubs play the Pittsburgh Pirates. Sponsored by the Chicago Cubs. With the football season here, winter's just around the corner. So here's a money-saving offer to help you prepare for what snow time of the year. For that snow time of the year, there's a fellow named Wild Art Bess of Bess Hardware and Sports on Willow Road in Northfield, and he gets wilder all the time. This time, Wild Art bought 15 truckloads. That's right, 15 truckloads of powerful 8-horsepower and compact 5-horsepower two-stage snowblowers. Now that he's bought them, he's got to move them fast. That's why he's sacrificing them at fantastically low prices. So low, in fact, they're hard to believe. Better hurry, though. At these prices, they won't last long, and this spectacular snowblower sale ends when the supply runs out. 
Don't suffer through another snowbound winter. Get your snowblower now at Best Hardware and Sports on Willow Road, just two blocks west of Edens in Northfield. Open Sundays 10 till 4. Remember the name, Best Hardware and Sports on Willow Road, just two blocks west of Edens in Northfield. Here at halftime in Michigan Stadium, it's the University of Michigan 10, Notre Dame 6. I'm Mike Pyle, and with me to uh, talk a little bit about this great game is the commissioner of the Big Ten, Wayne Duke. And uh, Wayne, not a bad crowd for a Big Ten game, huh? <laughs> i tell you what, Mike, this is all it's all about. A great, great crowd, a great day, two great institutions and two great football teams. This well, is what it's all about. That's for sure, and, and by golly, I guess at this point in time, uh, they may not accept we almost call Notre Dame a Big Ten team because their month of September is pretty rough for them playing three Big Teners, Michigan, Purdue, and Michigan State. That's right. The University of Notre Dame and Big Ten institutions have joined a great relationship over 30 years, and certainly it's extended in this particular year with uh, three right off the bat, as you suggest, Mike. Well, Wayne, I guess you'd have to say no surprise so far in this ball game with the score being this close and uh, plenty of action out there in the field. I think that's right, Mike. Uh, everyone predicted a very close football game, a very a uh, good defensive game, uh, hard hitting, and I think we're seeing all of that right here. Well, Wayne, uh, as we enter the season this year, uh, any changes in the Big Ten? We look, it looks like there may be a little change in power. Purdue looking real good. Michigan State looking ominous so far. Uh, and Ohio State, I guess, uh, I think they're losing that ball game. They right? are. They're down 17-7 right Is right there now. going to be a change, finally? Well, I think there is, Mike. Uh, you know the big two little eight syndrome, I think, and I hope it's something of the past. And that which is merely reflective of all of college football. If you look around, uh, one of the problems I think we have in college football is domination by a select few of the polls, the bowls, and television. And I think we're going to see a leveling off the competition. I think we've seen it already in the Big Ten. I think you're going to see more of it. The coaches are the greatest barometers, and they say it's going to be a very competitive race, and I think it will be. Wayne, do we see anything across the board in the Big Ten and changes in athletic programs, uh, uh, women's sports, and all of that? Just what is the, the future of athletics in the Big Ten right now on kind of a general basis? Well, I think the uh, matter of Title IX and women's athletics obviously represents a very serious ramification with which all educational institutions are current these days. It's not a matter, Mike, of uh, saying, hey, we shouldn't have a very uh, justifiable and rapidly emerging women's program, which we are, but it's a need to find new funds, allocation of funds, to support and to justify those programs. And that's one of the biggest problems we have right now. It really is a problem, any, any, isn't it, finding the money? And, uh, Wayne, maybe we'll get a chance to talk more about that back in Chicago, but uh, let's enjoy this action over here. And I know you're pretty busy during halftime, so why don't we just, uh, we'll let you get away. And, Wayne, Commissioner of the Big Ten, Wayne Duke, thank you very much for stopping by in the WGN booth. Well, thank you, Mike, and it's always a pleasure having WGN back on board broadcasting a Big Ten game of the week. Well, it's great for us being able to do this game with the Cubs in Philadelphia. And, boy, I'm sure glad I'm here. I've never been in Michigan Stadium to see 105,000 people. People. That's oh, really certainly something. quite a spectacle. Okay, thank you, Wayne. And now, uh, after after a quick message, we're going to have a chance to visit with the SID, the Sports Information Director of Notre Dame, Roger Valdeseri. Here's a special message from Colored and Cadillac in Brookfield. Colored and Cadillac will sell you any 1979 Cooper Sedan DeVille in stock for $1 under invoice. Repeating, Colored and Cadillac will sell any 1979 Cadillac Coupe or Sedan DeVille in stock for $1 under invoice. Colored and will show you the factory invoice. Yes, Colored and will actually show you the factory invoice. This sale positively ends on Monday, September 17th. There will be no exceptions. This Saturday, Sunday, and Monday are the only three days you can take advantage of this. Call 485-1070 to reserve yours. 485-1070, that's 485-1070. Colored and Cadillac, 9500 West Ogden in Brookfield. Remember, three days to get any 1979 Cadillac DeVille for $1 under invoice. Call 485-1070. Roger, we give that phone number enough, they ought to be able to write it down. Roger Valdeseri, the Sports Information Director of, and Assistant Athletic Director at Notre Dame, is my guest now during the halftime ceremonies here at Michigan Stadium. And, uh, well, Roger, what do you think? Are you pleased to see Notre Dame where they are in this ball game, just four points down? Well, I'd rather be four points down rather than <laughs> about nine or ten, uh, Mike. But um, I thought we played uh, rather well in spots. I don't think that we've uh, stopped their offense as well as our coaches would like, perhaps. 
And their great defense has taken some of our offense away, and I think we're going to have to make some adjustments at halftime. Well, Roger, the reason I asked the question that way is, to me, the biggest concern for Notre Dame had to be worrying about that young defensive team going against Michigan in the opening game of the season. I've got to guess that was the big one. Yes, we have about five or six sophomores in that defensive unit, Mike. And uh, you can tell that they're trying to get their sea legs there for a while. And, uh, but I think they'll, you know, come out and maybe uh, make a few adjustments even on defense, and hopefully we can stop Michigan. Uh, they have a great offensive team. They have great skill, skills at the, uh, you know, uh, halfback and wide receiver spots. Well, Coach Devine uh, didn't surprise us a little bit. We were surprised to see a couple of players on that field that you weren't sure about, and I'm sure you probably didn't know until game time. Jay Case and Scott Zedek were able to play in that defensive line. There's ones with a little more experience that you didn't know would right. be able to play. Well, Jay Case Monday, Mike, I would have said he would have been out for the season. He Is was, that right? Yes, he was really had uh, he really had uh, some back spasms and but he came along very well Wednesday and Thursday I think they let it up to Zedek and and Case and Sai if they felt well enough to play mm -hmm. well they were in that ball game and another pleasant surprise had to be one the big question mark quarterback Rusty Lish he played well in that first half and this young uh, I believe freshman Tony Hunter the wide receiver yes I'd like to see him get uh, loose on a couple because he does have a speed he has great hands and uh, I think we might see uh, Rusty thrown to him a little more in the second half. Well, he certainly was open uh, on several occasions, and another one is uh, the big tight end, Maztec. Uh, Maztec uh, is, a, is a, an exceptional football player, Mike. He's only a sophomore, and he may be one of the best tight ends we've ever had, and we've had some good ones like Casper and McAfee. But uh, I think what, you know, we had a couple opportunities down in the round of 20, and then we un unfortunately got two 15-yard penalties both times. And uh, if we can eliminate those mistakes, maybe we can, uh, you know, cross the goal line once or twice the second half. <laughs> well, I know it's going to continue to be a tight game, or I'm sure it will. Vegas Ferguson, of course, I guess you have to worry a little bit about him. He got an awful lot of time carrying that football in the first half. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, hopefully we can uh, get a little more diversified in the second half. I think they're taking some things away that we'd like to do, and I think that leaves it up to Vegas to try to get yardage. Roger, anything you'd like to say about your first three games without having to take a handkerchief out of your pocket? Uh, Michigan, Purdue, and Michigan State? <laughs> no, but I'm glad I'm not the coach. <laughs> but, you, you, uh, you, you feel know, very safe up here yeah, in the press box. it's a very huh? difficult schedule, but that's the way we like it. You know? Well, you have the toughest schedule probably It didn't happen by accident, football. Mike, and, yes. you know, and it gets worse even, even uh, in the future. This is WGN Radio Chicago. We're in the middle of halftime at Michigan Stadium with... Michigan leading Notre Dame 10 to 6 and Roger Valdeseri, the sports information director at Notre Dame and I are are visiting uh, as you say it's it's by design but uh, you don't know when that schedule is done how many years advance is that schedule set up well with some teams were scheduled up to 1999 believe it or okay, not Okay, 1999 you know, so. there's no way for you to know that you're playing a schedule the toughest schedule based on record last year in the nation right you know 1990 we may not be any good you know who knows <laughs> i mean teams go through cycles but you know when you put michigan i, I don't think i can believe that <laughs> statement 1990 you might not be any good that's <laughs> but we need to have two time. great institutions like uh, michigan and notre dame with such great traditions and in this stadium you know 106,000 people uh it's just a great you know quality spectacle because uh, i think if you look at cleveland browns and kansas city chiefs last week two great names and pros played before 44,000 people, you know, yes. and uh, there's something about college football that you just can't duplicate anyplace else. Well, I think you're right, Roger, and right here in the, in the Midwest, uh, college football. You look at the teams from the Midwest in that top 20. Uh, we, we've always had Notre Dame, Ohio State, Michigan last year, Michigan State, State. Purdue with great sure. teams. By golly, uh, football in the Midwest, college football. And it's not as crazy as down there in the southeast or southwest either. <laughs> We're a little more sane up here in the Midwest, I but think. We still like it, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we still like it as much, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a privilege really to be a part of such a, such a game. Well, it's a privilege for me and for us at WGN to be a part of this game, Roger. And uh, thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, Roger Valdeseri, the Sports Information Director at Notre Dame, and by golly, it's going to be fun watching your team all year and fun watching the second half of this ball game. Thanks, Mike. Nice to be with you. Thank you very much. Rain can give you fresh water, nourish your crops, and quench your thirst. It can also give you some headaches, damaging leather shoes, clothes, and your homes. 
Water acts as an adhesive attracting dirt and dust. And over a period of time, it can literally destroy porous materials. There are many water repellent products on the market, but Thompson's Water Seal actually waterproofs. Unlike others that merely coat the surface, Thompson's Water Seal is a transparent, penetrating, waterproofing sealer that leaves no residue and doesn't change colors. Thompson's Water Seal waterproofs concrete, brick, block, wood, canvas, and drywall. And it's so simple to use. Spray brush or roll it on and your water penetration problems are over. Since water is going to be around for a long time, it's nice to know the people who make Thompson's Water Seal will be too. Thompson's Water Seal is available at Heinz Lumber and Ace Hardware. Let's take a look at some of these uh, college scores as they go on, games in progress. Let's go run right down this. Uh, at halftime still, we've got a score of Oklahoma 7, Iowa 6, Oklahoma number three in the nation. Halftime here, as I've already said, many times Michigan 10 Notre Dame 6 a final Penn State defeated Rutgers 45 to 10 first period score Nebraska 7 Utah State 6 a Big Ten game Missouri now leading Illinois 14 to 6 in the fourth period and with a minute to go that's Illinois 6 Missouri 14 and my golly an old buddy just stopped by so I'm gonna put these scores aside we'll get back to him uh, George Moose Connors best known for well I don't know Moose what you're best known for one of Notre Dame's all-time greats in the college football hall of fame in the pro football hall of fame as a Chicago Bear and uh, George I know you know that Notre Dame team awfully well what's your reaction to that first half well I, I thought that the penalties hurt Notre Dame they had two 15 yarders both when they were driving uh, Michigan uh, to me is an amazing football team I've never seen such quickness both on offense and defense and uh, they talk about uh, uh, making a uh, missing Rick Leash. This guy Dickey is uh, is good a quarterback. That run he made down uh, to the goal line on third and long yardage was just fantastic. They've got great running backs. They've got good defense. Their inside linebackers have uh, Simpkins and uh, Canavino have really impressed me. Well, I can't believe the way that Michigan defense is all over the field. You'll see Turgovac, the middle guard, making a tackle on an end run. You'll see this Curtis Greer, a big 250, 60 pound tackle. He's all over the field. Every player on that defense you might find anywhere. Yeah, they really have quickness. Uh, Notre Dame. Uh, Ferguson carried the ball 17 times. Lish carried it twice. And I'd say Notre Dame, even though they lost two of their fullbacks, they got to go to this young guy's Sweeney, and they've got to change their attack. Well, I noticed that, too. We didn't see Sweeney carry the ball in the first half, did we? Nobody carried the ball but uh, Ferguson and Lish. Notre Dame came out early in the, in the period and started moving people around. The tight end, a little bit of motion, and for some reason they gave it up. Another pretty impressive player, someone you told me to look for it to be before the game started, and that's that Tony Hunter, the freshman. Oh, he, he's something. He made a great catch on the far sideline, but uh, our television replays show that his left foot did come out of Oh, I, I really wish we'd had a monitor up there. I wanted to see that one over again. You're well, saying that, yes, he did. Yes, he did. He, his left foot came down, and then his right foot inbounds. Dan Devine tried to change the referee's opinion, but you can never do that. <laughs> but uh, Michigan is very impressive. The thing uh, that I'm thinking about in the second half, the Notre Dame uh, did capitalize as well as they could on their two fumble recoveries and got six points out of it with not too much offense. Uh, Michigan has had their chances, and they've only been able to put uh, 10 points on the board. So if Notre Dame can get any kind of spark and generation on their offense, uh, maybe they could turn this game around. I still think it could be a good ball game. Well, I think so too, George, as you, as you pointed out. Notre Dame hurt very badly by the penalties, so they, they have stayed in this game and stayed in it well. How about Rusty Lish? Have you pleased with the way he's performed? Well, I think he's performed pretty well. Uh, he got, a, got away. Uh, the thing uh, that was disappointing, uh, Notre Dame going for third down yardage. Twice they failed by a yard because the tight end Mastic uh, did not run deep enough, and they missed it by a yard both times. Uh, on defense, Notre Dame has got to get in there and punish Dickey and make him pitch the ball off. 
it looked to me like Notre Dame did make one adjustment during the first half, and I'm sure they're going to have to make others, and that is, boy, the ends were awfully open in that first quarter, uh, either for Lish or for uh, one of the other backs, uh, Edwards, especially the tailback, uh, but it looked like they did move to almost every play, playing over shifting that defense. Well, I think Notre Dame is worried more about the outside than they are the inside, and that's why Dickey is running. And I think you just have to take your chances on the outside on somebody breaking a long one and go in there and hit that quarterback, even though he, he's going to pitch the ball and punish him a little uh, to let him know you're around. George, one, up. one quick change of subject. Uh, you Another team you played for for a lot of years. What do you think the Bears' chances are against Dallas tomorrow? I think they're pretty good. I'm impressed with the Bears uh, this year, Mike. I think the coaching je uh, staff has gelled, and that's the difference in the team this year and at the end of last year. Uh, they're getting better coaching, and I think it's showing on the playing field. They're a totally organized football team, and they're synchronized together. Well, by God, that's good to hear from somebody who knows. knows. And, Georgia, hey, thank you very much for stopping by. Okay, Mike. <laughs> Appreciate it. A couple more finals in college football. Missouri did beat Illinois. Tough for Gary Moeller. 14-6, to Missouri over Illinois. A game out in the East. A final, Wake Forest defeated Georgia 22-21. to Another Eastern final, Pitt playing at home defeated Kansas 24 to nothing. Back in the Big Ten, it's Minnesota 17 over Ohio State 7 at halftime. 17-7, to Minnesota. And in the Northwestern game in the third period, it's now Northwestern 20, Wyoming 16. A final, Michigan State defeated Oregon 41 to 17. Wisconsin at halftime is leading Air Force 17 to nothing. And another final out in the East, William and Mary 28, Colgate 15. Final, Miami of Ohio 15, Kentucky 14. There's a little bit of a surprise. And Syracuse defeated West Virginia 24 to 14. The Eagle has landed on all fours at Roselle AMC Jeep in Schaumburg, America's only four-wheel drive. That's right, four-wheel drive vehicle. You think Chevy's front-wheel drive citation is good? Well, then compare it to the Eagle. All-weather dependability is the number one feature that Jeep has offered for 35 years. Now, this same engineering comes to the AMC Eagle, a sporty luxury vehicle with four-wheel drive. Roselle AMC Jeep is the Midwest's largest Jeep dealer and they're on their way to becoming the Midwest's largest Eagle dealer. Why? Because they're the four-wheel drive discounters. When the storms came last winter, they still discounted every Jeep in stock. And now, even though the Jeeps and Eagles are in very short supply already, they're still discounting. Four-wheel drive expertise and Jeep discounts. That's the Roselle AMC Jeep way of doing business. Get the four-wheel drive vehicle that suits you before the storms hit this year. Remember, if you're snowed in before you have your four-wheel drive, you may have a tough time getting here to buy it. Roselle AMC Jeep Eagle, 920 West Gulf Road in Schaumburg. Let's take a look at the uh, halftime stats now as the University of Michigan football team comes back onto the field. In the first half, as we know, Michigan leads Notre Dame 10-6. The... Uh, the stats may be a little more one-sided than that. In first downs, Michigan had 12, Notre Dame 3. Rushing attempts, Michigan ran the ball 22 times for 126 yards. Notre Dame ran the ball 19 times for 43 yards. Passing yardage, Michigan 86, Notre Dame 65. And individual stats, B.J. Dickey. Ran the ball for seven times and 60 yards for Michigan. Edwards, Stan Edwards, carried the ball 11 times for 44 yards. For Notre Dame, Vegas Ferguson, he was the, he was the workhorse. 17 carries for 51 yards. Rusty Lish carried the ball twice for a minus eight yards. In the passing category, B.J. Dickey passed the ball 10 times with six completions, a total of 86 yards. Rusty Lish for Notre Dame. Nine attempts, five completions for 65 yards. And Bill, I think that's uh, the well. That's the way it stacks up. A pretty doggone close ball game. Michigan a little bit on the uh, top side so far, but uh, Notre Dame, well, still very much in the ball game. It's been a very good game, Mike. And as you and I were discussing in the waning minutes of the first half, Notre Dame, with their offense. Uh 
being somewhat suspect because of injuries. Uh, relied very heavily on Vegas Ferguson. They are going to have to diversify a bit here in the second half, one would think, uh, because Michigan has really started to key on Vegas, and uh, I don't care what kind of a running back you are, you just can't carry the load that much yourself. You know, we ought to make one correction from the first half. We were looking around to find out, find out who recovered that Anthony Carter's fumble on that punt. We said it was Tom Robluski, who, uh, who normally would have number 68 on, yep. but it turns out that it's Tony Belden. Now, Tony Belden, they're saying, was wearing 68. Why, I don't know. He's yeah. a backup fullback. So uh, you had you had the right jersey. It's not your fault. You had the right jersey. They switched them on you. Well, but then Tony Belden being a fullback, that's a little hard to understand that. Maybe they got him playing the defensive linebacker or something. Well, he'll be pleased. You gave him due credit. If he'd been wearing the right shirt, he would have gotten credit in the first place, right? Okay, let's start it. Stan Edwards is going to be deep. Anthony Carter is going to be deep. Carter, by the way, is considered by Michigan people to be perhaps the fastest player that they have ever had in the history of Michigan football. That is saying a lot, but that's exactly what they say about Anthony Carter, the little 5'11", 155-pound freshman. He returned one punt last week against Northwestern for 78 yards and a touchdown, and he caught a touchdown pass, and he's doing very well this afternoon, even though he hasn't scored. He did make one mistake. He coughed up a fumble. So the Irish kick it off. Mail boots it deep into the end zone. Carter's going to run it out. He's at the 5, 10, 15, get the hole up near the 20 and driven back. Anthony Carter. Gutsy, gritty little guy says, I'm not going to take any touchback. I'm going to run with that thing. And he got just shy of the 20-yard line. It was Brendan Monahan. Brendan Monahan, who said, nice to see you. And bang, down to the earth went Carter. So they'll put it in play, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. The Wolverines with the football to start the third quarter and the lead at 10 to 6. And B.J. Dickey has been superb. He hands off to the first man through the fullback, Lawrence Reed, and Lawrence Reed finds tough going as he crosses the 20-yard line, gets to the 21. Mike Whittington, the linebacker, was the first man to hit him. Give him two yards and a tough two at that. Second down, eight yards to go for the Wolves. Anthony Carter, the wide receiver, brings in the play from the Michigan sidelines. He spreads wide now to the near side. And the wingback, Clayton, now goes wide to the right. Here's a pitch to the deep man. We get a reverse to Carter. Carter is hemmed in and dropped back at the 17-yard line. They tried to work the reverse. A naked reverse at that, and it went absolutely nowhere. It was naked. It was wide open for all to see, including the Irish defense, and they hammered him. The strong safety, Steve Sitchi. And the defensive end, John Hankard. The first two to really smell it, diagnose it, and bring him down. Third down and 12 yards to go. The ball resting on the 18-yard line of Michigan. Mitchell back in the ball game, spread wide to the left side. Dickey, play action fake, looking, looking, throws up field, got his man out of bounds. Just over the 25-yard line, it was Ralph Clayton making the reception. They'll mark it at the 27. Sitchi, the strong safety, drove him out of bounds. So the Irish partisans hooping it up now as the kicking situation is forced. Fourth down and four yards to go. Virgil standing back in his own 12. He'll get the kick away from about the 15 with a forward thrust. There's the snap. It's a good one. He bangs it. End over end kick. Taken at the 35-yard line. And being drilled and dropped immediately. The run back by Weimer, and he could not go. Thirty-nine yard kick and nothing on the return. Needham, the first man to get him. So Weimer could not go, and the Irish will put it in play first and ten on their own 35-yard line, trailing ten to six in the opening minutes of play here in the third quarter at Ann Arbor. Rusty Lish has gone all the way so far for Dan Devine's Irish at quarterback. And here's a handoff to the first man through. He diving, squirming. And it was Ty Barber trying to get a couple of yards. 
Ty Barber getting his first carry of the afternoon. The fullback replacing Sweeney. Greer brought him down, as did the linebacker, Canavino. And that's the first fullback carry of the ball game for uh, Notre Dame. Yep. Picked up three, second down, seven yards to go for the Irish. Dropping back to throw his Lish, rolling to the far side of the field. Looks up field, can't find anybody. Lugs it across the 40 to the 45-yard line and slides to the turf at the 48-yard line of Notre Dame. They credit Needham with a tackle, but it was more a matter of Lish going to the turf as Needham closed in. A pickup of 10 on the play. It's a first and 10 for Notre Dame. They mark it just over the 47-yard line of the Irish. 12 and a half minutes to go, third quarter of play. Four-man forward wall for Michigan. A 4-3 right now. Hand off to Vegas Ferguson. Breaks open at midfield, 40-yard line, 35-yard line. And they just did get an ankle and trip him up at the 33-yard line of Michigan. And Ron Simpkins, the linebacker, was the one who got an ankle or quite conceivably Vegas Ferguson would have been gone. He picked up 19, and he might have had it all, but for Ron Simpkins, who grabbed an ankle, broke his balance, and caused him to go down just outside the 33-yard line of the Michigan Wolverines. Another first and 10 for Notre Dame. Lish calls him out, looks over the defense, long count, rolls, gives off to Vegas Ferguson, cuts up. 30-yard line, 25-yard line. Curtis Greer, the first man to hit him. Kites was there. Needham was there. But not before he managed to cut back against the grain and get to the 25-yard line. A pickup of eight, second down, and two yards to go for the Irish. The ball resting on the 25-yard line of Michigan. They're moving that football on the ground. Yes, that run are. by Vegas Ferguson was a, was a phenomenal run. Did a great job of cutting back against the grain, eluding a couple of tacklers. Fine job. Second down, two yards to go. It goes to Vegas Ferguson. He cracks to the 23-yard line. Canavino was the man who hit him. But he is very, very close to the first down. Very close. Third down and maybe a foot. No more. Third down and just about a foot for the first down. The Irish moving from their own 35-yard line. Trailing 10 to 6 with 10.40 to go in the third quarter. Vegas Ferguson dives, drives down near the 20-yard line. He's got the first down and more. When in doubt, give it to Ferguson. Found a pretty good size hole in that uh, tight line in that third and one situation. Yes, Look, he did. Looks like that uh, offensive line of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish are really coming off that football, something they didn't always do in the first half. Tim Huffman, the right guard, and the right tackle, Tim Foley, blowing the hole open. First and 10 for the Irish at the 19-yard line. As Lish calls him out, man in motion, off to the left. Lish with a pitch to Ferguson. He's at the 20, he's at the 15, hurdles a man, 10-yard line. Inside the 10 to the 9. Vegas Ferguson running, darting, hurdling. Finally brought down by the free safety, Michael Harden. The left guard, John Leon, made a super block on that play, pulling out a 6'2", 240-pound senior. He's the one that opened that one up. A first and goal to go situation for the Irish at the Michigan nine-yard line. The Irish driving on this, their first series of downs in the second half. Sweeney back in at fullback. It goes to Ferguson, 20 at the 10 inside the 9 to the 8-yard line. He had to hesitate momentarily at the 10, looking for his hole, trying to pick his way. Nothing opened up. He had to go it on his own as he got back to the line of scrimmage, which was the 9-yard line, and got a couple more with it. They mark it at the 7, second and goal to go. Simpkins and Canavino making the tackle. Second and goal from the 7-yard line as the Irish clap hands and break the huddle and come up. Lish sets him down. Man in motion. Off to the left. 
Rolls left, goes to Sweeney at the five. Sweeney is stacked up as he gets to the five yard line and falls forward for another half yard. The freshman fullback from Deerfield High School, six foot two, 220 pound John, Free, uh, John Sweeney getting to the five yard line. Third and goal, Canavino made the stop. Third and goal from the five for the Irish. They had first and goal at the nine, second and goal at the seven, now third and goal from the five yard line. Pitch to Ferguson, Vegas Ferguson, play action pass. Incomplete. Incomplete. The pass was intended for the flanker, Houlihan, and it was Jimmy Stone, 42, in place of Ferguson, 32, who had the option. And he threw for Houlihan and overthrew him. So for the third time this afternoon, Chuck Mayle is going to be called upon to kick a field goal. It'll come from the 12, a 22-yard effort. It is up. And it is good. We have timeout on the field with the score. Notre Dame, nine now, with Michigan leading at 10 to nine. Well, the sun's real hot, and my thirst can't wait. I want to taste that great. I've got the ribbon on my mind. No other deal will do. Why can't this hurt that? Why there are a lot of beers but there's only one pack it's brewed to be the best, naturally, with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. That's blue ribbon on my mind. That's blue ribbon on my mind. Final going over 35, Massachusetts. Well, we know it's heating up now. Pyle just took off his sports jacket. 8.21 to go the third quarter, and we do indeed have a ball game. And it's coming to you on WGN Radio in Chicago, just about 5 o'clock. Here in Michigan, 4 o'clock Chicago time, Bill Berg and Mike Pyle, hoping you're enjoying it. A 22-yard field goal by Chuck Mayle with 8.21 to go, and it's 10-9 in favor of Michigan. And Mayle boots it. High booming kick into the end zone. Anthony Carter, the nearest man to it, but this time he will not get an opportunity to run it back as it's out of the end zone for a touchback, and the Wolverines will put it in play first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. That, by the way, was a 65-yard drive for Notre Dame. It started on their own 35, culminating with the 22-yard field goal, the kick actually coming from the 12, and, of course, the 10 yards for the end zone, a 22-yard kick, giving Notre Dame their third field goal of the afternoon to account for all of their scoring. From the I formation, Dickey with the call as a man goes in motion off to the left. Fake. Dickey and a keeper just did get across the 20-yard line to the 21. The Irish really starting to stiffen up on defense now. B.J. Dickey got about a yard, and that's it. Hankard was right there, the defensive end. Whittington came up to help with a stop. Billy uh, scoring the Big Ten. In the fourth quarter, Ohio State is now leading Minnesota 21 to 17. And here it is second down and nine yards to go for the Wolves. Play action fake. Dickey wants to throw, goes over the middle, oh, intercepted no. by Notre Dame. Intercepted at the 22-yard line, down to the 20 and the 15, and it was Davey Weimer picking it off. Another costly turnover. The Wolverines have been burned twice on fumbles, and now a pass interception by the Irish. Puts him in a great position to go ahead in this ball game with 7.36 to go. As Davey Weimer was the man who picked off the pass by B.J. Dickey. B.J. Dickey just waited too long to throw that football. It was a play-action pass. He's got to get rid of it. He's got to go with that run fake, but he hesitated. He waited, and Weimer, he threw that out in the flat. Weimer had it all the way. He stepped in front for a couple of seconds there. I thought it might be pay dirt for Notre Dame. If it hadn't been for Lawrence Reed, the fullback, bringing him down, it would have been just that. Here's a play-action fake, a pass, it is intercepted oh, by 
Michigan at the two-yard line as they return the favor. And the man picking it off was the outside linebacker, Mel Owens. So just that quickly, the Wolverines strike back. An interception by the Irish and an opportunity to go ahead in the ball game for the first time today, negated by the superb effort of Mel Owens, the outside linebacker, and Michigan has the football right back. We have a timeout on the field. With the score, Michigan 10, Notre Dame 9. You know, sometimes the life of a doctor is not quite as glamorous and rewarding as you thought it would be when you decided on your medical career. This could be especially true if you're a young attending physician just entering your first job. What are your real ambitions? Do you want to practice medicine in a well-equipped clinic with highly trained technical support? Or maybe your main interest is in aerospace medicine. Whatever your desires are, if your present position isn't as fulfilling and promising as you think it should be, maybe you owe it to yourself to check out the many opportunities offered the Air Force position. Just to satisfy your own curiosity, why don't you stop by and talk with Captain Donald Davies at 111 North Wabash, Suite 1805 in Chicago, or call him at 263-1207. The Air Force, now more than ever, a great way of life. Sponsored by U.S. Air Force. Back at Ann Arbor, seven minutes and 29 seconds to go in the third quarter. Michigan leading by one, 10 to nine. And what a ball game, Mike Weimer. Bill, Mike Weimer you. picks one off and Michigan comes right back with Mel Owens doing the same thing. Good thing I took my sport coat off because it really did heat up. But both of those throws by both quarterbacks, Dickey and Lish, should not have been thrown. I would have to agree with you. Dickey now at his own two yard line gives off to Stan Edwards who had to come out of the end zone and got back to the line of scrimmage and maybe about a yard beyond that and no more. Bob Crable, the middle linebacker, making the tackle for Notre Dame. Second down, nine yards to go, and it's going to be very difficult going for the Wolverines, one would suspect, right here. Second and nine on their own three. Clayton is out. A play has been brought in by Alan Mitchell. Two tight ends. And the first man through gets the call, and that goes to Lawrence Reed. He's out over the five-yard line to the six. Lawrence Reed with very little running room, brought down by Scott Zedek. Kevin Griffith right there as well. Third down, seven yards to go. The ball resting on the five as the Irish try to contain him and get good field position. Clayton back in. He's in motion. Off to the right side. The handoff goes to the second man, Edwards, the tailback, and he is rammed to the ground, short of the line of scrimmage. He lost a yard or two on the play. He was dropped back at about the three-yard line. Crable was there. Zedek was there. Whittington was there. There were white shirts all over him. So it's going to be fourth down and a long eight, and it's going to be a tough job right here for Brian Virgil. He's practically out of the end zone. He really does not have much room to maneuver to get this punt away. It's under pressure. He gets a good snap. He just got it away. He goes to the ground. No flag. The ball is allowed to bounce at the 30. It takes a bad bounce from Michigan. Bounded back from the 30. Was finally downed by the Wolverines at the 28-yard line. And it was Needham grabbing the football. Great job by the Notre Dame punt block team who came in, put a lot of pressure on Virgil, forced him to kick that ball straight up in the air, took a bad bounce, and they've got tremendous field position on the 28-yard line. They mark it actually now at the 27, so we'll go with the scoreboard. From the 27, the Irish. Give it to Vegas Ferguson. Ferguson driving, driving those legs, gets just shy of the 25-yard line, where Andy Canavino was the man to bring him down. He got to the 25, they drove him back to the 26, they give him one on the play, second down and nine yards to go. Bill, the thing about Notre Dame's running game so far, they're moving the ball with that little fullback, Ty Barber, 185 pounder in there. 
It goes to Ferguson, goes outside, can't get any running room at the 25, falls forward to the 24. He wanted to sweep outside. He saw that they had the play turned in. They did not let him wide. He tried to come back up against the green, and there were two or three Wolverines right there to meet him. And all he could do was fall forward for a yard. Dale Kites, after the play was turned in, was able to make the stop as he cut against the grain along with the middle guard, Mike Tregovec. So it is third down and six yards to go from the 23-yard line. Wing right. Wingman in motion now off to the left. That's Houlihan. A pitch to the deep man. Ferguson, 25, 23-yard line and upended. The Wolverines right there to hem him in and drop him right in his tracks. Vegas Ferguson simply not able to go. And again, it was the middle guard, Mike Turgovac, who was the man of the hour, to draw a beat on his belt and drop him to the turf. Fourth down, five yards to go. The ball in the 22. We're going to get a fourth field goal effort. It'll come from the 30-yard line, a 40-yard attempt. It's on its way. It is good. The Irish have taken the lead with four field goals. Time out on the field with 3.46 to go in the third quarter in the score. Notre Dame 12, Michigan 10. Your Ford dealer's clearance of the century cellophon is well underway. And here in Clearance Control Central, the phones are really ringing. Super deals are being called in every minute on Pintos, Fiestas, LTDs, Fairmont, Pickups. Remember, your Ford dealer has got to sell every 79 Ford he has in stock. So forget list prices. See your Ford dealer during the clearance of the Century Cellathon. He's dealing like mad. Save up to $1,000 as Ford's biggest incentive plan in history continues. A Coke and a slide makes me feel good. She makes me feel nice. Have a Coke and a slide. That's the way it should be. I like to say. Chicago listeners will be happy to hear this final score. Northwestern 27, Wyoming 22. Rick hey. Venturi, after losing over here 49 to 7 last week, came back with a win this week against Wyoming. That's good to hear. The Cats deserve it. Glad to hear it. Edwards and Carter are the deep men, both standing on the goal line for Michigan. And Chuck Mail will kick it off again. And again, he gets a good toe into it, sails into the end zone and out of the end zone. Anthony Carter couldn't get over to it, and so it's a touchback. Michigan again will start from their own 20. Chuck Mayo has as strong a leg as I think I've ever seen in college ball or pro ball or anywhere. Oh. Every one of his field goal attempts, the last one being a 39-yarder. Against the wind. Against the wind. The kicks have all been against the wind, his field goals. He's cleared those uprights every time, even with that 39-yarder. He's put almost every kickoff out of the end zone. He is some kind of kicker. It's a deceptive kick, too, because it just gets up there and then sails on you. B.J. Dickey calling him out from the eye, fakes to the short man, gives the pitch back to the tailback. That's Edwards, and he cannot go. Just did barely get back to the line of scrimmage, perhaps crossed the 20 for about another foot or two, and that's it. Hankard was there. Treble was there. Another Big Ten final, Bill. Ohio State came back to defeat Minnesota 21-17. So Ohio State's still in it. Carter spread wide to the near side. Also flanked wide is Clayton. Dickey looks over the defense, fakes to the first man, rolls, going to keep it, goes across the 20, 25-yard line, and he's knocked down at that point. And we get a flag on the play. There was a flag down as Dickey was knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line, and let's see what that's going to be about. Johnny Krim was the man who hit him. And the, and the flag was thrown right there. There was the only one around for Michigan was a Michigan blocker. So I think it was clipping against the Michigan blocker who was blocking Krim, who still made the tackle. Yeah. It's going to go against the Wolverines. We're going to walk that football back. 
so again Michigan is going to find themselves deep in a hole as that Irish defense is getting tougher and tougher that's it a clip so the football is now sitting back on the 12 yard line and it is a second down and 18 yard to go situation from the 12 Dickey Edwards Reed in the backfield Carter slip wide from the eye formation Dickey calls his signals play action fake to the fullback looking getting good protection rolling out He's at the two-yard line being pursued to the five, throws a long pass upfield. It is incomplete. Incomplete at the 44-yard line. It was intended for the tight end, Doug Marsh, and it was broken up by Dave Waymer, who just a few minutes ago made an interception. Dave Waymer going one-on-one, -on -one, staying with the tight end, Doug Marsh, and breaking up the pass play to bring up a third and 18 situation from the 12-yard line for Michigan. Notre Dame defense is fired up. The whole Notre Dame team is fired up offensively and defensively, put tremendous pressure on B.J. Dickey that time, forcing him out of the pocket. He threw that ball on a full run. Some question whether he should have just turned it up and run. They slot Clayton right, spread wide right, is Carter. And the handoff goes to Stan Edwards, and Edwards is driven back. He is driven back as he reached the 15-yard line. He was able to go absolutely nowhere. A kicking situation once again for the Wolverines and it was Scott Zedek, the junior from St. Viator's High School, who made the initial stop. And again, it's going to behoove Brian Virgil to get one away, not as deep in the end zone as he was last time, but nevertheless, right now, standing in the end zone. The kick will come from about his own three or four yard line once he gets that football. He gets it, a good snap, gets the boot away, high spiraling kick, not terribly deep. Fair catch called for and made at the 45-yard line. And it was Johnny Krim who made the fair catch. The Irish will put it in play. A 32-yard kick, 147 to go in the third quarter. The Irish leading it by a score of 12 to 10. The ball game started with Michigan taking the lead 3 to nothing on a field goal. Notre Dame came back to tie it, fell behind. 10 to 3, then it was 10 to 6, 10 to 9, and now they lead it on their fourth field goal, 12 to 10. The call, Vegas Ferguson across the 45, down near the 40-yard line. Kenavino, the first man to knock him down. Andy Kenavino, the junior linebacker from Cleveland, making the stop at the 41-yard line of Michigan. Clock running with a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. And that old thing about momentum would seem to be in Notre Dame's favor at the moment. Rusty Lish has gone all the way at quarterback, drops back, wants to throw, rolls right, looks, can't find anybody, going to have to run with the football, going to have to eat it. Back on the 44-yard line, he was dropped. Curtis Greer was there. Turgovac, the middle guard, was there. As Mike, it looked like it, I don't know whether that was a broken play or not, but he darn near collided with his fullback, and then as he rolled right, it was obvious that he was scrambling and searching and couldn't find anybody open and that just that play never did materialize just poor execution Vegas Ferguson stepped up and uh, Lish rolled a little deep he did run into the fullback I'm sure that spoiled the timing of the play never had a chance to get that pass off third down nine yards to go for the Irish from the 44 Lish back to throw they hand him in got him at the midfield strike the outside linebacker Ben Needham the first man to put a couple of arms around Rusty Lish and a seven-yard loss. Michigan hasn't used that red dog much, but they sure came with their linebackers that time. Rob Martinovich, the left tackle for Notre Dame, tripped coming out, had no chance to pick him up. So Bush is going to have to kick it away. Gets the kick, a driving, spiraling boot. Carter can't get it. Let's it go wisely into the end zone for the touchback. For just a moment, it looked like he was going to try and make one of those knee-high catches, but he thought better of it. He let it go. It's a touchback. It'll come out to the 20. That's it for the third quarter of play at the end of three quarters here at Ann Arbor. The score, Notre Dame 12, Michigan 10. 
Say, Bob. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Show me some of those four-wheel drive GMC trucks. Well, the we GMC dealers offer you a, a whole herd to choose from, like pickups, Suburbans, Jimmys. I want one to pull me through the blizzard of 80. Blizzard of... 80, you heard right, partner. Why, last summer I predicted the blizzard of 79, but no one listened, not even me. So there I was, stuck in snow up to my... Gas cap? Yep. All my car was good for was to store meat. Well, he looked over my stock of GMCs, and a frisky four-wheel drive Jimmy caught his eye. Almost too pretty to be called a truck, buckaroo. A while later, he rode off into the sunset in his new GMC. Well, now, GMC Jimmy, we're ready for anything. Hi, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's a good boy. Maybe someday I'll teach you how to count with your front tire. <laughs> In Waukegan, visit Lake County GMC, and in Downers Grove, see Ford Pontiac GMC. Another Big Ten final, Oklahoma defeated Iowa 21-6. Oklahoma number three in the nation. Iowa only a point behind at halftime, was not able to hold on. And Bill, Michigan has some work cut out for them. They're down, and Notre Dame is really flying. They did make some adjustments at halftime. They sure did. But Michigan sure hasn't given up this ball game in any way. Their defense still playing awfully well. Well, the key is whether that Michigan offense can move the football. Well, we wondered whether or not we were going to have a game. Both of us presumed we would. Bill Frink on the evening sports on my talk show all week was kidding me about not making a prediction. I said, Bill, flip a coin. You get these two together in front of 105,000 people, and you'd have to be the world's greatest psychic to figure out who's going to win. Listen to these fans listen now here it. in Michigan Stadium. Yeah. They're telling their team, let's do it right now. They've oh. got 80 yards to go, and boy, are they letting them know that they're still around. And we have 15 minutes of what will be very, very tough football to be played on a beautiful day in Ann Arbor. Couldn't be a better football day. And a packed house. I just hope we get back to that airport in time to fly out of here. 105,000 people, and we've seen some extra seats. We've seen at least two balloons up in the air, plus the Goodyear blimp. Yeah. Catching some free seats. <laughs> okay, let's see what Dickie can do. He's got Edwards and Reed in there. It's a play action fake. He wants to throw on first down. He's under heavy pressure, and they drive him to the ground. Notre Dame has him back on the 11-yard line. The Irish pouring on through. Oh, I'll tell you, that's a fired-up Notre Dame defense. They spot the ball on the 11. So a nine-yard loss. It is now second down and 19 yards to go. Hankard came pouring in. Griffith came pouring in. Dickey had quite a reception committee as he tried to roll out and pass. This time he gives it off to his tailback, and that's Edwards checking across the 20 out to the 25-yard line. Stan Edwards with good acceleration at the 20-yard line, moving the football forward for a 14-yard gain brought down by the strong safety, the sophomore, Steve Sitchie. So he got some of that loss back and more. It's third down and five yards to go at the 25, and the crowd wanting their Wolves to pick up that first down right here. It's vital to them. From the eye, Dickey calls his signals. Fakes, looking, running, Gets across the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40. Dickey selling his beat at the midfield stripe and into Notre Dame territory. Dropped at the 47-yard line of the Irish. John Krim, the cornerback, the man making the stop. As B.J. Dickey rolls and whirls and runs for 27 yards and a Michigan first down. And I'll tell you again, Mike, when that play unfolded, it didn't look too fancy. Initially, it looked like some poor execution. But he made the best of it, whatever it was supposed to be, and really burned the Irish. Well, B.J. Dickey's done a lot of damage to the Irish. He had 60 yards running the football in the first half and just had a 27-yarder. Clayton slotted right. Handoff goes to Edwards. He's across the 45, the 40, and inside the 40, fumbled the football. He fumbled the football as he crossed the 40-yard line, and let's see if they're going to give it to the Irish. The question is, had the whistle blown? The Irish had the football. Now... Where was the football in relation to when the whistle was blown? That's the question. Whittington hit him. Are they going to disallow the fumble, say the whistle had blown that he was down, 
and allow Michigan to retain possession. Yes, they have. They are going to. That's going to be Michigan it, I believe. Retains the ball, and they're bringing in the. Uh, yep, the markers. Check, check, to for, check the first for the down. first down. So he coughed up the football, but they ruled he was down. And so the Irish will remain on defense. Now the question is, will it be first down for the Wolverines? It is first and ten for the Michigan Wolverines at the Notre Dame 38-yard line with 12 minutes and 53 seconds to go in the ballgame. A couple more final scores. Wisconsin defeated Air Force 38 to nothing this afternoon. And in baseball, the Pittsburgh Pirates defeated the New York Mets 5 to 4. The Irish leading in this one 12 to 10, but Michigan driving here in the fourth quarter. Dickey rolls right, looking, crosses the 40 on a keeper, just did get back near the line of scrimmage and no more. B.J. Dickey trying to tuck in behind his backs and his guard on the right side, but to no avail is Joe Remke. Joe Gramke, the sophomore, brought him down. Little or no gain, maybe a half a yard. Call it second down and a long nine. Ball resting just outside the 37-yard line. Dickey rolling left, gets one block, looks upfield, throws from the 40. It is incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, Doug Marsh, but he overthrew him. So it'll be third and about nine and a half from the 37. That stops the clock with 11.59 to go in the ballgame. Notre Dame leading 12 to 10 by virtue of four field goals by Chuck Mayle. You have to say B.J. Dickey's had open receivers all afternoon, but with some regularity, he has been letting that football fly, overthrowing a couple of times on the run like he was that time but he's overthrown open receivers on a number of occasions. Clayton spread wide to the right. He has Mitchell left. He wants to throw. Dumps off to his back. That's Edwards at the 40, the 35, the 33-yard line, and brought down at that point. Tom Gibbons was there to hit him. Also getting up from the bottom of the pile. Hankard. Great move by Edwards on that play. Boy, he hit. He was running into a pile, and he gave a quick juke. Missed about three tacklers. Now what do you come up with? Fourth down, four yards to go. The ball resting at the Notre Dame 32. Let's see what the Wolverines are going to do. Fourth and four from the Notre Dame 32. A lot of time, but they want to call time and talk it over. Time out on the field with the score. Notre Dame 12, Michigan 10. With the football... With the football season here, winter's just around the corner. So here's a money-saving offer to help you prepare for that snow time of the year. There's a fellow named Wild Art Bess of Bess Hardware and Sports on Willow Road in Northfield, and he gets wilder all the time. This time, Wild Art bought 15 truckloads. That's right, 15 truckloads of powerful 8-horsepower and compact 5-horsepower, two-stage snowblowers. Now that he's bought them, he's got to move them fast. That's why he's sacrificing them at fantastically low prices. So low, in fact, they're hard to believe. Better hurry, though. At these prices, they won't last long, and this spectacular snowblower sale ends when the supply runs out. Don't suffer through another snowbound winter. Get your snowblower now at Best Hardware and Sports on Willow Road, just two blocks west of Edens in Northfield. Open Sundays, 10 till 4. Remember the name, Best Hardware and Sports on Willow Road, just two blocks west of Edens in Northfield. Well, Aliachi Sheik is going to really try and bang one home for three from a long way out. The kick will come from just a hair inside the 40. It'll be a 50, 50-yard 50 field goal attempt against a moderate win. Aliachi Sheik is going to try and give Michigan the lead at 13 to 12 if he gets the field goal. Here's the snap. It's good. The ball is down. The kick is on its way. It is no good. No good. Wide to the left. So the Irish will take over the football and retain the lead, at least for the moment, with 11-14 to go. Notre Dame 12 and Michigan 10. Now let's see what the Irish come up with in offense and see whether or not they continue to go at it, Mike, and try to put 
more points on that board, one would presume that they would try to do just that, of course. They will do that, but they but, sure will not take any chances right. with that two-point lead. So Let's see. Let's see how conservatively they will play with 11 minutes to go in the ballgame in a two-point lead. Rusty Leash from an eye formation. Dropping back. Hands off to Ferguson. Ferguson gets himself up to the 35-yard line where he's met by Ben Needham. Pickup of three. Second down and three yards to go. Ball resting right on the 35-yard line. Michigan now with six men up front. Hand off to the second man through. Football is loose. Does it belong to Michigan? It does, I believe. It looks like the University of Michigan just might have the football. They have it. All-American candidate Curtis Greer recovered that fumble. It is now on the 38-yard line. Now the Notre Dame defense is really going to have to dig in. 10.37 to go in the ball game. Maybe the break the Wolverines have been looking for. Dickey dropping back. Hands off to Edwards. Edwards up near the 35-yard line. Dropped at that point. John Hankard, the defensive end, making the stop. They spot it back on the 36, give him a yard, second down and nine. Well, Michigan coughed it up twice, and they both turned into Notre Dame field goals. Let's see what Michigan can do with a turnover here. Second and nine. Dickey gives off to Edwards. Edwards crosses the 35-yard line and then is driven back. Not much there. Notre Dame's front wall stiffening up on defense. They spot it right at the 35-yard line. Scott Zedek, the first man to hit him. Notre Dame defensive line playing awfully well this afternoon. That was one of the big question marks because of injuries. Jay Case and Scott Zedek being two of them who have played. And John Hankard, the left defensive end, has had a fantastic afternoon. And he's been all over the field. I think he's a converted linebacker, although he's 241 pounds. Third down, eight yards to go. Dickey wants to throw. Looking, he is dropped back at the 42-yard line. Don Kidd, six-foot-three-inch junior, making the sack back at the 42-yard line. And that takes the Wolverines out of scoring potential as they will have to punt it away. They are not within field goal range, and Virgil's going to have to kick it away. Our broadcast coming to you on WGN Radio in Chicago. Bill Berg and Mike Pyle hoping you're enjoying it. It's 12 to 10, Notre Dame over Michigan with 8.45 to go in the ballgame. Low snap, but he gets the kick away. Hangs a high kick, bounding at the 10, going to the 5, covered by Michigan. They try to down it. Let's see if they give it to him or not. No, sir, they're going to rule touchback. Michigan had four blue jerseys all around it as they tried to down it inside the five-yard line at about the one, and they blew it. So it's a touchback, and it's going to come out to the 20-yard line. Timeout on the field, 8.36 to go in the game. The score, Notre Dame 12, Michigan 10. but there's only one Pabst. It's brewed to be the best, naturally, with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. I've got a taste for living. I'm thinking cold blue ribbon. I've got that blue ribbon on my mind. I've got blue ribbon on my mind.
Bill, I'll tell you, that was a big play or big mistake on the part of Michigan, not being able to down that football on that two or three yard line. They weren't able to do it. The, the player that missed it was Tony Leone. He's a senior tailback. He let it spurt out of his hands, get into that end zone. Big difference. Notre Dame from the 20. The handoff goes to Vegas Ferguson. He gets across the 20 and is stacked up right there. And Tim Cagle is now quarterbacking the Fighting Irish. Whether or not there has been an injury to Lish or Dan Devine has just decided to change things around and go with Cagle remains to be seen. But the fact is the junior from Cincinnati was the signal caller on that play. Turgovac made the tackle on Vegas Ferguson. It was for no gain, second down and 10 yards to go for the Irish. Cagle remains in there at quarterback, man in motion off to the left. The give goes to the deep man from the eye, and that amounted to nothing. Again, Vegas Ferguson trying to struggle and fight to get back to the 20-yard line. And they had him knocked down immediately. Needham was there. Stuart Harris, the wolf man, was there. And they dropped him short of the 20. He lost a yard. If anything, make it third down and 11 yards to go from about the 19, 19 and a half. With Cagle in that ball game, we may see Notre Dame try and stay on the ground as they have so far. Cagle calls his signals, drops back, gives it to Ferguson on a delay. Ferguson is across the 20 up to the 25 yard line, but that's not enough for the first down. And Michigan's going to get the football back, and they should get it in reasonably good field position. Simpkins made the tackle along with Dale Kites. The ball is at the 25 yard line of Notre Dame. And Dick Pushka is going to be called upon to bang one. Anthony Carter is deep, as is Mike Jolly. Carter being the deepest, standing on his own 36-yard line. Here's the snap. Pushka gets the kick away. Spiraling kick, bounding at the 40, the 35. Carter lets it go. It rolls to the 30, inside the 30. A good roll for Notre Dame and down to the 26-yard line. So the Irish covering the punt very well got the advantage of the good bounce and overall it covered 49 yards and Michigan will not have nearly as good a field position as they might otherwise have had had it been fielded. Timeout, 6.35 to go, score Notre Dame 12, Michigan 10. This is Ed McMahon with an important announcement from the Ford Motor Company. It's answer to rebates. Ford has just made available the largest incentives in its history to its dealers, making what is already the biggest clearance offer in Ford history even bigger. This can mean tremendous savings for you on a fine Ford car or truck. See your Ford dealer and discover how many hundreds of dollars you can save on new Tremor 79 Ford LTDs, elegant Thunderbirds, and Mustang pace car replicas without mechanical modifications. You can also save hundreds on tough V8 Ford pickups, vans, Broncos, and Rancheros. And your Ford dealer offers you much more than savings. Perhaps most important, you'll be buying Ford quality. See your Ford dealer now for a great deal on a great new 79 Ford. That total Ford value might very well be the best deal around. Well, that Notre Dame defensive unit is spending more and more time on the field. Let's see if they can come up with a big play again here. Dickey trying to move his Wolverines. They're on the 26-yard line with six and a half minutes to go. The handoff goes to Edwards, trying to get outside, cannot go, driven out of bounds. And the man driving him out was the middle linebacker, Bob Crable. Good pursuit by Crable as he slipped along the line of scrimmage and did not let the back get outside. Dan Devine showing a lot of confidence in his defense. When they had the ball that last series, he kept the ball on the ground, even third and 11, a passing situation, ran the draw play, saying if we can't pick it up on the ground, we'll let the defense hold him. So he's showing an awful lot of confidence in that defense that they didn't know about. The youngsters on the defense, and boy, have they come through so far. Four-yard loss on that last play, second and 14 from the 22 for Michigan. And this time, a play-action fake and a pass over the middle. It goes to the tight end, Marsh. And they converge on him and drop him at the 29-yard line. Good play-action fake by Dickey as he rifled one to Doug Marsh on a quick slant over the middle, but he's dropped at the 29-yard line, and that's about it. So it is third down and seven yards to go from the 29. Again, one would presume a passing situation, if not a draw, for Michigan. 
Alan Mitchell, the wide receiver, brings in the play. Anthony Carter comes to the sideline as Michigan breaks the huddle. Clayton split wide to the left. Mitchell to the right. Play action fake. Dickey back to throw. Good pursuit. They got him and drop him. He is dropped inside the 20-yard line back at the Michigan 18. One man back there for Michigan trying valiantly to help out. Ed Moransky, the strong tackle, was trying desperately to help out. But it was to no avail as Scott Zedek came blowing in with John Hanker. And it was simply a matter of too many too quickly. And down went Dickey. Fourth and 17 at the 19, and a kicking situation for Brian Virgil. He's kicked from deep in the end zone, short in the end zone, and now he's standing back in his own six. Gets it away from about the 11. High kick fielded at the 45. And dropped at that point. No run back. Johnny Krim was the man who made the tackle. We have a flag down. Reeves made the stop as John Krim hauled it in at the 45 and could not go. Michael, did you pick up any signal yet? It's going to go holding, against the Irish. Holding penalty against the Irish. Okay, so we walk it off from the 45. Notre Dame would have had pretty good field position, but not now. The ball's back on the 30-yard line now. And it is indeed a holding penalty assessed against the Irish. But they have the football first and 10 with 4.58 to go. And they are holding on by the slim margin of two points, 12 to 10. Now it behooves the Wolverines to dig in and get that football back for this partisan crowd of about 105,000. Lish. Good ball pass is incomplete. It is Curry in his quarterback now on a rollout. Mike Curry. And the ball was picked off by the Michigan Wolverines. Mike Jolly was the man with the reception. And maybe that's the break that Jim Beckler needs. A couple of turnovers now. A fumble by the Irish, not converted by the Wolverines. Now a pass interception by Mike Jolly. And the football is in Notre Dame territory at the 44-yard line. Mike Curry was the quarterback who just came in, and that's the first time we've seen him this afternoon. And the first thing he did was throw an interception. What a first play of the season for Mike Curry. I don't know. I kind of wonder about that call. Dickey dropping back. He wants to throw. Rolling right. Throws. It is deflected and goes out of bounds. That'll bring up second and ten from the 44. Well, you have to wonder. Cagle got himself into a play that was costly. Curry comes in and on a rollout right throws an interception. You have to wonder if Rusty Lish was hurt playing Cagle on one series, then bringing in another Curry, uh, yeah. another quarterback, Mike Curry, in this kind of situation. I can't ahead think, Mike, by two points. Yeah, I can't think there would be any reason not to go with Lish unless he is hurt. Here is a handoff to read the fullback, and he drives forward to the 40-yard line beyond the 40 and is driven back. Bob Crable hit him. Leopold hit him. It's right on the 40-yard line. Third down and six yards to go. Clock continuing to run. Four minutes and 20 seconds to go in the ballgame. The Irish lead it by two on four field goals. It's 12 to 10. Dickey calls his signals, drops back to throw at midfield. Throws up the middle, it is incomplete. And it looked like the receiver just might have cut the wrong way. It was intended for Ralph Clayton. He went up the middle to the 30, curled back in. And it almost seemed as if Dickey was expecting him to continue to run perhaps a post. For some reason, he curled back. And the ball was overthrown by a mile. He's done it all day today, Bill. He's overthrowing those receivers. In that case, again, Clayton, who's been their big play man when they needed it in other games. Well, hard to say whether he was open, but he overthrew the ball by so much. We also have to look. Michigan is going towards the end zone to our right, which has been against the wind all day, and that wind has died down. Virgil kicking on fourth down. Not a good kick. 
hit it straight up in the air. And the ball is bouncing the wrong way for Michigan, and it's finally down. You wouldn't tell by that kick that the wind had died down, however. He kicked the thing straight up in the air. He just, yeah. uh, he just shanked one. The fullback, Lawrence Reed, was the man who finally caught up with the football. It was bad enough that it was shanked straight up. But then it started to bound the wrong way at that. And Lawrence Reed quickly grabbed onto the football and downed it at the 35-yard line. And we get a timeout on the field with 3.55 to go. Notre Dame 12, Michigan 10. Every homeowner at some time or other is plagued by costly moisture problems. The best way to eliminate these expensive problems is to use Thompson's Water Seal. Thompson's Water Seal is a transparent waterproofing sealer that penetrates below the surface, setting up a moisture barrier lengthening the life of any porous material that it is applied to. It is also excellent for sealing and preserving bricks and masonry. Because moisture is the major cause of paint peeling, it can be greatly minimized by priming wood surfaces prior to painting with Thompson's Water Seal. Thompson's Water Seal is also an excellent additive to oil-based paint. It acts as an extremely effective bonding agent and at the same time eliminates brush and lap marks. Remember Thompson's Water Seal when you want to seal your patio, concrete driveway, or stop water seepage from hairline cracks and walls. It's the ultimate in waterproofing. Thompson's Water Seal is available at Heinz Lumber and True Value Hardware. Okay, let's see what the Irish come up with here. They own the football with 3.55 to go and a two-point lead at 12 to 10. Bushka back in at flanker. Poulihan is out. And let's see if they've changed quarterbacks on us again. We're going back to Cagle. Cagle is back in at quarterback, and the handoff goes to Vegas Ferguson, and he goes right off right tackle across the 35-yard line out near the 38-yard line. Vegas Ferguson, who carried 17 times in the first half, not used nearly as much in the second half, nevertheless got the call there and was brought down by Simpkins and Turgovac. Pickup of three, second and seven from the 38. Timmy Cagle calls the signals. Wingman set left. Vegas Ferguson dropped in the backfield. Dropped for a loss as he got back to the 35-yard line, across to the 36 and no more. Curtis Greer, the left tackle, the man blowing in. And he is strong. He can bench press over 400 pounds. And he just about bench pressed Vegas Ferguson right there and really dropped him. Bill, with Cagle back in the ball game, almost makes you think that Mike Curry was sent into the game at quarterback for that one play, that rollout pass, maybe to run, to pass on the run, because Cagle hasn't thrown a pass, and what a way to have it happen when he goes maybe in for that one play to throw it, and he threw the interception. The Irish trying to hang on to the ball, third and nine. It goes to Vegas Ferguson, and he cannot go as he gets across the 35 out near the 38, but that's about it. Andy Canavino and Ron Simpkins again in on the tackle. So it brings up a fourth down situation, eight yards to go, a kicking situation, and the Michigan Wolverines will again get the football back in the waning minutes of play. Two minutes and 22 seconds to go and the clock running. Carter and Jolly are deep. Bushka gets the snap, gets the kick away from the 28. Angling to the right side, not a good kick at all. The Irish all around it, it bounces and is finally blown dead at the 42-yard line of Michigan. That's where they'll put it in play on their own 42 with two minutes and two seconds to go, a 21-yard kick. So both of these punters, Mike, in the last couple of minutes have shanked them. If there's been anything weak in this ball game today, it has been the punting. Throughout the game, there have been some, some weak punts. Uh, another score, another Big Ten score. Indiana beat Vanderbilt this afternoon 44-13. to Here's a new wrinkle for you. Bo Schembechler has now inserted John Wangler at quarterback. He's the senior from Royal Oaks, Michigan. In on his first play, play action fake, throws to the right side, broken up nicely. Intended for Marsh, broken up by the strong safety, Steve Sitchie. So Johnny Wangler, 6'2", 192 pound senior quarterback from Royal Oaks is in there for Michigan with just under two minutes to play. The incompletion stopping the clock, 1.57 to go in the ball game. Well, Wangler and Dickey in passing last week against Northwestern were just about the same. Yeah. 
Wangler Wangler had five of six for 67 yards. Dickey six of eight for 68 yards. But I don't understand the change now. Dickey was not the problem before. Yeah, Wangley had a touchdown last week. Dropping back, looking forward right here. Wants to throw. Can't. He's in trouble. Gets across the 40. 45. Made the best of a bad situation as he got up near midfield. They had him trapped back around the 35-yard line, but he managed to break loose. And Michigan quickly calls time. With a minute and 42 seconds to go in the ball game, there is timeout on the field with a score of Notre Dame 12 and Michigan 10. When a coach scouts his opponent, he looks for certain qualities which will tell him how best to prepare. The better teams will have a combination of strengths, more than one quality that gives them an advantage over the others. That's exactly the case with the First National Bank of Lincolnwood. More than one quality sets them apart from the field. At the first, you'll receive the convenience of the big bank, but you'll also feel the friendliness of the smaller, intimate bank. People and pride in banking professionalism are the trademarks of the team at First National Bank of Lincolnwood. There are three locations to serve you. The main bank at the corner of Lincoln and Devon, also at the convenient location of Lincoln and McCormick, and at the corner of Tui and Crawford. Why not do your banking where the pros do it? Let the team at the First National Bank of Lincolnwood take an interest in you. Their professional and personalized service is unmatched. One minute and 42 seconds to go in the ball game. The Fighting Irish with a two-point lead at 12 to 10. And the senior quarterback, John Wangler, leading the attack for the Wolverines as they try to bail one out here in Ann Arbor. Running backs in tight, looking to throw incomplete, intended for Clayton. That stops the clock with 1.39 to go. And now brings up an all-important fourth down. They are not in field goal range, of course. The football rests on the 48-yard line of the Wolverines. So right here, they need a first down. Boy, what a big play. And, and I, as I say, I still question bringing Wangler in the game in the final two minutes. B.J. Dickey was not the problem. They weren't getting those passes off. That offensive line just had not been holding, and Dickey had been rushed. And Wangler's coming in fresh. He's thrown a couple of bad passes. Fourth and four from the 48. Wangler back, looking, throws over the middle, and it's complete to Clayton. He's got the first down. He's inside the 30, the 45-yard line at the 43-yard line. Michigan trying to line up quickly. They want to go without a huddle. 134 to go in the ball game. 133 and 32. Wangler calls his signals, drops back, looking, throws over the middle again, and it's complete to the tight end, Doug Marsh. And he's dropped inside the 40-yard line of the Notre Dame 38. One minute and 20 seconds, 119, the clock continues to run. Michigan lining up, Notre Dame trying to adjust on defense. Notre Dame leads by two. Wangler, play action fake, throws over the middle. He's got his man again at the 23-yard line. The pass is complete, and it was to Allen Mitchell, the wide receiver. 107 to go in the ball game. And again, Michigan wants to go without the huddle. One minute and seven seconds to go. The clock stops to let everybody line up and get back on sides. Now it starts again. 103, 102. We have a minute to play in the ball game. Wangler dropping back to throw. There's a flag on the field. He starts to run with a football, but it's blown dead with the whistle. We had a flag, and let's see what it's going to be about. Could be a procedure call against the Wolverines. Well, it was. Uh, Norm Betts, the, the backup tight end, came on the field, ran out, Turned around, the quarterback Wangler must have said something to him, ran back off the field, tried to run off the field. He didn't quite make it off. I personally thought I was watching him. I thought he got off the field, but then again, uh, I've disagreed with officials many times. But I thought he did get off of that sideline. Looked like they were confused. I had, just before that happened, if I had been Notre Dame, I think I might have called a timeout because they'd run those three great plays, throwing down the middle, hurry, and hurry up offense, no timeout, uh, no stopping the clock. North Notre Dame was confused, so that mix-up by Michigan slowed that down. It's too bad. Clock running, 47 seconds, 46 and 45. Wangler hands off to Edwards. Edwards cracks to the 20-yard line and is brought down at that point. There's 37 seconds to go in the ballgame. Michigan trying to line up. Notre Dame trying to get set on defense. 31 seconds, 30 seconds. Wangler dropping, throws outside to Clayton. Incomplete, that stops the clock. It was broken up by John Krim as he tried to go to the wingback, Ralph Clayton. Well, we wondered, as did thousands throughout Mid-America wonder, will we have a ball game on Saturday? Will the young, untested Irish function 
you know the answer now. Time out on the field with 26 seconds to go. Notre Dame leading 12-10. Round, round, get around, I get around, yeah, get around, round, round, I get around, get around, get around, round, round, I get around. summer you ought to get around to some of the Chicago's fine museums, art galleries, and landmarks. A great way to get there is on the RTA culture buses. They leave at 11 o'clock a.m. Sundays plus holidays from the Art Institute on Michigan Avenue at Adams Street in Chicago and return by 5 p.m. There are three different tours to enjoy. Stops along the way include many of Chicago's most vital attractions. It's only 80 cents and your RTA super transfer lets you get on and off as much as you like. Also during the week, many RTA buses serve these same great sites. So spend the day seeing Chicago's best. Take the RTA Culture Bus this Sunday. It's a great way to get around. Get around, get around, I get around, yeah. Okay, here's the situation. Third down, seven yards to go for Michigan. The ball is on the Notre Dame 20. There are 26 seconds remaining in the game. Notre Dame leads by two, 12 to 10. Now, it behooves the Michigan Wolverines to at least get a little closer if they can. They are now probably within field goal range, but obviously they would like to make it closer. They would like something of a chip shot if they could get it to win the ball game by one point. That remains to be seen. The Irish gonna have to step in on defense right here. Let's see what the Wolverines come up with on third down. If they don't get the first down, if they don't get the touchdown, it's most probable that they would go for the field goal. 26 seconds to go, they're at the line of scrimmage. And the handoff goes to Stan Edwards and he has dropped for a loss. A big play by the Irish. That will cost the field goal yardage. The ball is now back on the 25 yard line. 12 seconds remaining in the ball game. 10 seconds, nine seconds, eight seconds, seven. Michigan now calls their timeout with six seconds to go and that will do it. The field goal unit is coming on and it is going to be the senior, Brian Virgil, who is going to be the man of the hour. And Michigan is going to win it or lose it right here on the foot of Brian Virgil. The ball is resting on the Notre Dame 25-yard line. The kick will come from the 32. It will be a 42-yard field goal attempt. Keep in mind, in collegiate football, of course, the goal post on the end line, a 42-yard effort. Six seconds remaining in the ball game. Tony Jackson is going to hold it. What they're going to do is they've let the timeout of Michigan run out. Now Notre Dame, Notre Dame is going sure. to call a they're timeout. They're going to make them think about they're it. They're going to make them wait and think about it a little bit. This series has been amazing, the series by Michigan. You've had some, some terrific plays with that hurry up, not stopping the clock, no huddle and throwing the ball down the middle. That's what surprised Notre Dame. Usually you expect him to throw it out of bounds, stop the clock, and try and complete one. He threw it down the middle, completed him. The last play Michigan called is one you really have to question, that draw play. Either they're going to just run the ball straight ahead, try and pick up a few extra yards, or throw the ball. But they went with that draw play. That surprised me because Notre Dame was really coming. Well, I suppose it could have worked just as well, but... Uh, uh, Boy, that's a tough break when you lose six yards well, yeah. in that kind of situation. Now they want to have the sure hands of a quarterback handling that football. Jackson will not hold. Now Dickey comes in to hold, and Jackson goes to the sideline. 42-yard effort by Brian Virgil with six seconds to go in the ballgame. And we have had a tremendous afternoon here at Ann Arbor, whatever happens. And this, remember, is just the first of a full season of Big Ten football that you will be hearing on WGN Radio. And boy, I want to tell you, if we have this kind of a game every week or anything close to it, we are in for a tremendous season. A beautiful afternoon in Ann Arbor. Approximately 105,000 people packed into Michigan Stadium, and the game comes down to the last six seconds of play. You couldn't write the script better. Okay, Dickey will hold. Ryan Virgil will try a 42-yard field goal. The Irish will be coming on. It's down. It is in the air, but it was blocked on the way up. It was blocked. The trajectory was not high enough. The football took off, started to soar over the Notre Dame line. But the Irish, with hands up and charging, came on and batted the football away. 
And now the Irish are being mobbed by partisan fans on the field. We still have one second showing on the clock in this football game as a disconsolate Michigan unit trudges to the sideline. He simply did not get the kick up in the air. There were five or six Notre Dame jerseys that came blowing in there. Who got a hand on it remains to be seen. We have no video. We have no camera in front of us. Well, any I, one I, of a number of kids could have got a grip. Bill, I in. think uh, Brian Virgil, as you pointed out, the trajectory was low. He just kicked it into the line. Yeah. He hesitated just a little bit as well, which gave it just a little more penetration by the Notre Dame defense. Looked like he paused just a fraction of a second. That, I don't think, was the difference. But, uh, boy, you'd like to look at some of these coaching decisions been made this afternoon in this great football game. Sheik, Aji Sheik one time, Virgil the next time. Here's Cagle. Cagle falls on the football, and that's it. It is all over. Notre Dame has avenged their loss to Michigan at South Bend last year by coming from behind to defeat the very powerful Wolverines this afternoon. The final score, Notre Dame 12, Michigan 10. With two good months of building weather left, now's a perfect time to put up that redwood deck you've been planning. And now is the time to cash in on the 20% merchandise bonus at Heinz Lumber. Just pick up over $100 worth of garden-grade redwood by September 23rd, and Heinz will give you 20% off your purchase in any in-stock merchandise, tools, building supplies, and other items for the home. Your Heinz professional has everything you need to get started on your handsome redwood deck along with helpful advice on materials and construction. He has deck kits that include lumber, hardware, and step-by-step -step instructions, all for as little as $246 for an 8-foot square deck. And Olympic stains and Thompson water seal stains help you add the final touches to preserve that rustic look for years. So get started now and take advantage of Heinz 20% merchandise bonus. Remember, when you do it yourself with Redwood, Heinz helps you do it right. There's a Heinz Lumber Home Center in Evergreen Park at 2601 West 95th Street. Mike, I have to think if you could point to one play, one of the plays, if not the play, that was most instrumental and turned this thing around for Notre Dame occurred with 8.36 to go in the ball game, and we referred to it earlier. Michigan punted. The ball rolled around the Notre Dame one-yard line. If Michigan downs the football there, Notre Dame is in very bad trouble, but they blew it. The Wolverines were not able to down it. It went into the end zone, even though they had four shirts around it. And so Notre Dame was awarded the football on a touchback at the 20-yard line, and that, I think, was really one of the key moments in the ballgame in allowing the Irish to preserve their victory. Four field goals for Chuck Mayle, a field goal of 30 yards in the first quarter, or excuse me, a field goal of 40 yards. He had one of 44 in the second quarter. He kicked a 22-yarder in the third quarter, and then the winning field goal to provide the margin of victory, a 39-yard field goal with 3.46 to go in the ballgame, and the Fighting Irish defeat the Wolverines of Michigan by a score of 12 to 10.